lightning strikes against the background of destroyed buildings. This world, shrouded in darkness, is devastated by monsters. Many humanoid rats stand among the ruins. Rats are the size of cars. A huge snake grabbed one person. Large birds with glowing orange eyes fly among the destroyed high-rise buildings. This is nothing. The problem is the legendary evil creatures who are the real rulers of the world. Against the background of the starry sky, silhouettes of a dragon, a skeleton with flaming eyes, a certain figure with long hair, and bats, and a werewolf are visible. Blue silhouettes are sad, most of them are sitting on the ground. People can only fight in endless despair. A bright yellow glow appears on each of the small islands. Fortunately, the Stargate appeared and gave desperate humanity one last hope. On top of them, a golden symbol levitates on top. Those who are not deprived of talent have a chance to enter the gate and become awakened, gaining a class and gaining incredible abilities, because they are the only ones who can fight back the monsters. A purple dragon with a rider on it flies above the warriors. City of Dawn in the city at night there are stargates, from which golden crackling energy emanates. Awakened community. The lights are on in most buildings. In the mansion, the double door is suddenly open and someone screams. The main character was kicked and thrown far from the entrance. He falls to the ground near the fountain. Blood is dripping from him. He says Fan Bin's name. The main character with an angry expression on his face tells the guy that 10 years ago his parents risked their lives to save him during a disaster and accepted him as their own son, thanks to which he became awakened, because their kindness was the size of a mountain. He adds that he did not expect him to stab him in the back and try to take away his home when his parents disappeared less than a month ago. The main character calls him an ungrateful scoundrel. Fan Bin calls the main character Bei Jin and asks him if he really doesn't understand why he is taking away family property. The main character is trembling. Fan Bin says that five generations of the Bay family have actually lived in this house for more than a hundred years, and this does not matter since all the houses in this territory belong to the six awakened guilds. A man with glasses and a business suit approaches him. He takes out a document and tells the main character that today he turned 18 years old, but he still has not received his abilities and according to general rules, those who have not achieved awakening by this age lose their right to live in the territory of the awakened community. Fan Bin smiles mockingly. The man with glasses adds that as an adopted child, Fan Bin automatically inherits the right of inheritance of this mansion and everything will be completed according to the plan, and there is no need for indignation. The main character is scared because of these words. With an angry expression on his face, he shouts at them that they did not convince him and are working together. He adds that there are many people who have not awakened by the age of 18, but continue to live here. He asks why he should be thrown out, considering what his ancestors did for the sake of the city. Fan Bin punches the protagonist in the face, pushing him away. He asks him how he dares to doubt the rules of the six guilds as an ordinary person and whether he really wanted to die. The main character falls to the ground. The man with glasses tells the smiling Fan Bin that he will leave it to him and leave first. With an ominous expression on his face, he reminds him not to forget what he promised. The guy responds by raising two fingers up and calling him by name Song, telling him not to worry because he will fulfill his promise. He spits on the ground with a displeased expression on his face. He looks at the main character, who rises from the floor. Fan Bin kicked Bei Jin in the stomach again. He stands on the head of the main character. With an ominous expression on his face, he says that he forgot to ask if he knows why. Being recognized as a genius since childhood, the main character was never able to get his class. He adds that this is because he started poisoning the main character when he was 10 years old. Taking the gray crystal lizard poison every month was destroying his body, and he was unable to awaken his skills in such a situation. The main character, with horror on his face, asks him why he did it. Fan Bin smiles ominously and calls the main character naive, and then says that the houses in this district are built near the Stargate, which is the best and safest place in the entire city of Dawn. The mansion is located very close to the Stargate. Fan Bin adds that this mansion is now his and being so close to the gate is a huge help for his growth, and in addition it is very safe here. Bei Jin grits his teeth and asks the guy if this means that he planned everything from the very beginning. He tries to get up from the floor. The adopted son says that he is a thief of Ranky, so his maximum was to rent an apartment on the outskirts. But if the main character does not awaken and his parents die, then he, as an adopted son, will inherit this house. The main character exclaims how blind his family was to shelter such a viper. Fan Bin puts his hands in his pockets and laughs, and then thanks the main character for the compliment. 
He leaned over to the main character and said that he forgot to mention that he told his parents some news and this time they went on an adventure. The main character is shocked, and his pupils have become small. The adopted son adds that in order to give the main character the opportunity to awaken his powers even despite the enormous danger, they did not hesitate to set out on their journey. He says that this is wonderful parental love. The main character grabs his head and calls for his mom and dad, and then calls Fan Bin a scoundrel. The adopted son kicks the protagonist again and drives him away. He tells the main character that the slums will suit him, and then calls him trash. The main character finds himself outside the mansion. He gets up from the ground and walks away from the mansion. The main character calls Fan Bin a scoundrel. He turns his gaze towards the mansion and says that he will return. The adopted son snapped his fingers and a green beam rushes towards the main character. Green energy is concentrated in his finger. He thought that even though the main character lost and no longer poses a threat, the best garbage is dead garbage. A brightly glowing stargate rises above the city. The main character leaned against the wall and thought that the pain was so strong that he had less and less strength left. He wonders if he is dying. Green blisters appear on his face. He falls to the ground thinking that he doesn't want this. He lies unconscious in the alley. A dim orange glow appears in the sky. From this glow shoots a golden ray of light. It hits the prone protagonist directly. He is enveloped in golden energy. He woke up and a drop of sweat was running down his face. The main character looks at his hand and thought that he did not believe that the legendary secret technique of reincarnation would still work. Bei Jin thought he was reborn. A black creature with purple eyes floats against a purple sky. On the ground are a wizard, a woman with black hair, a woman with blonde hair, a man with a shield, and a man on top of a mountain. In the foreground is a man with white hair and armor who is pierced by a blonde woman with a sword. He asks why she did this, because he always treated her like his own child. The girl apologizes and tells the guy that if he doesn't die, then she will have to live in his shadow, otherwise she will never become the strongest goddess of war in the world. The girl with black hair calls the man Meng Jin and says that he is an ignorant warrior. The man with the shield says that the great demon god's power is beyond his imagination and asks how he dares to think about fighting him. Meng Jin grabs his sword and his left eye glows red. He says that this means that they have been leading him by the nose all this time. He breaks the blade of the sword and says that the idea of joining forces to kill the demon god and end this dark age is just his wishful thinking. And they have completely forgotten about their oath to protect humanity and are mired in their own greed. He adds that instead they see him as a threat and want to maintain their power. The warrior asks if they think they can defeat him like this and he answers that no. Tianfei has a drop of sweat running down her cheek. The warriors behind her have red eyes. Meng Jin is enveloped in golden energy. He says that he is the strongest warrior mankind has ever known, and the only SSS ranked god of war. He asks how he can die so easily and adds that he will return and become stronger than before. The golden magic circle appears around him. His body gradually disappears. In the middle of the circle, only the man's armor remains, shrouded in energy. The armor falls to the ground with a deafening crash. Bei Jin gets to his feet and tells Tianfei and the others to wait for him, because since he survived, he will eradicate their sins one by one. He looks at his fist and asks what's wrong with this body. He wonders if it is poisoned and adds that it seems to be the poison of a grey crystal lizard from the dark world, as well as the E-rank ability of a thief. The body is so weakened due to long-term poisoning that the internal organs are already in holes. He looks at his shaking hand with horror. He asks how his soul could choose such a useless shell. He remembers Fan Bin's adoption by his family, his parents' disappearance, his adopted son's conspiracy with Song, and then says that these are the memories of this guy. The main character touched his temple and said what an ungrateful brother he has and because of similar circumstances his soul chose this body. He looks at his hand and notices that he had such a strong will before his death. He looks at the soul of the previous owner of the body and says that he, Meng Jin, will fulfill this will. Bei Jin's soul disappears. He says that reincarnation is complete and now he has truly become the master of this body. The main character looks at his hand and says that this body is so weak that the chance of becoming awakened is less than one in a million, and not to mention returning to the previous level which will make it difficult to even fulfill his last wish. He looks into the distance and says that in his past life, being the strongest SSS rank god of war, he made the impossible possible. He puts two fingers to his temple and says that he has mastered a huge number of skills and there must be something that will improve his physical strength and allow him to change his fate against the will of heaven. He thought about the law of Nirvana, the six paths of reincarnation. 
he thought that he had acquired the legendary secret art of the six paths of reincarnation along with reincarnation in the mysterious void lands. And since reincarnation had proven to be effective, then the six paths of reincarnation should also work. The main character remembers how he defeated many monsters in the lands of the void. He adds that if he masters this, he will definitely be able to change this body and gain even greater power than in his previous life. The open stargates are located in the middle of the buildings. Ming Jin says that in order to transform, he first needs to enter the stargate to awaken. He adds that now his name is Bei Jin and it is with this name that he will return to the top and become the strongest in the world. City of Dawn, Stargate. Near them are many people, among whom is the main character. He thought that the City of Dawn was located in the southern part of the planet, and that it was far from the celestial city located in the north where he used to live. He adds that this means that he was thrown from north to south. He looks around and thought that he was away from Tianfei's influences, and this is the best thing to become stronger. He looks the other way and thinks that the City of Dawn is the largest city in the south, and there really are many awakened people here. Bei Jin adds that he used to be like them, fighting day and night in wild places to increase his strength and achieve his dream of becoming the god of war. The main character approaches the man in a brown vest behind the counter and tells him that he wants to apply to participate in the awakening. This man tells the main character that he has already tried twice this month and failed both, but due to the fact that his father is the captain of the awakened group, he is entitled to free attempts, but with his potential, he can forget about awakening. The man in the vest looks contemptuously at the main character and whispers that this is just a waste of resources. Bei Jin, with a menacing expression on his face, asks the man to repeat what he said. He is enveloped in a dark aura and his eyes glow red. The man behind the counter is scared and beads of sweat are running down his face. Someone pushes a man in a vest with his shoulder. This is the captain of the Chai Bo guard with gray hair and a beard, who asks the guy in the vest what happened. The main character thinks about the name of this captain while they are talking. The main character made a serious expression and thought that according to this body's memories, when Chai Bo was young, he was saved by Bei Jin's parents. He thought about how this man would treat the son of his benefactors after the changes to the Bei family. Chai Bo points his finger at the man in the vest and tells him that the Bei family has been an awakened family for generations and they have made great contributions to the development of the city, and then asks him if he has any problems accepting the application. The captain of the guard asks where the awakening star map is and holds out his hand. He calls the main character, which makes the guy surprised. The gray-haired man holds out a card and tells him to take part in the awakening. He pats the guy on the shoulder and whispers that if he fails this time, he will need to look for shelter and asks him not to stay on the territory of the awakened residents because it is dangerous. The captain of the guard leaves and the man in the vest bows. The main character smiled a little and thought that Chai Bo is the person who knows how to repay gratitude. The street near the gate is lively. Bei Jin stands near the golden gate. He throws the awakening card down the aisle. The gate consumes the awakening card until it disappears completely. The main character jumps over the gate. He stands in the middle of many golden silhouettes. He trembles and spreads his arms, and then thinks what is happening and whether this body cannot withstand even the pressure of the place of awakening. He adds that this is not surprising, given that he was poisoned for so many years. The main character is trembling and understands that achieving awakening will be extremely difficult. The potential test taker resonates with the stars, enters into a contract, and then can awaken. The golden ray enveloped the person in its light. The more starlight the test subject attracts, the greater the transformation his body will undergo. This was a huge advantage and a bright future. The man hits the floor with his hands. Those who fail to resonate with the stars end up as ordinary people and rot in poverty. Bei Jin looks at the starry sky and thinks that although there is a star here that resonates with this body, its state is too weak and it is impossible to receive a normal amount of starlight and make a contract, let alone awaken. The main character takes a deep breath and thought that he foresaw this and judging by the light of this star, even if he receives it and is able to awaken, the transformation will not be complete. A bead of sweat trickles down near his nose. He thought that if he wanted to come back, he would have to take risks and give it his all. A huge golden replica of his image appears behind him. He decided to try the legendary secret art of six paths of reincarnation and adds that he needs to ignite a huge amount of spiritual power and summon the wheel of six paths, and then gather the light power of countless stars, purify the essence and transform his body. An image of the protagonist from a past life appears next to his current body. He thought that in his previous life the power of his soul was strong, and although he suffered losses after rebirth, 
His soul power should remain strong enough. He ignites the power of his soul, after which the golden image ignites. A firestorm surrounded Bei Jin. The streams of fiery wind gradually subside. A main character stands in the middle of a golden magic circle. A bright flash of light is visible in the sky. A golden beam shines directly at the main character. Crackling energy emanates from the man in the center of the circle. The subjects observe what is happening. Some of them say that they don't understand what happened and ask how starlight can shine like the sun. Another test subject says that from such an amount of starlight the body should have been completely transformed. A huge cracked stone appears with flames emanating from it. The main character hovers nearby and says that the six paths of reincarnation have proven themselves worthy, and taking the initiative and attracting stars for resonance is a brilliant solution. But this is only the first step. Fiery energy bursts out towards the main character. Fiery energy envelops the main character, and he says that the time to curb the flames of starlight, and the real awakening begins now. The main character looks at his body and says that in order to awaken the class, you need to withstand the extinction of this flame. And although he has experienced a lot over all his years, it really hurts, but for him it is nothing. He clenched his hands into fists and the flames around him intensified. He stands with his mouth wide open, shouting his words furiously. A lot of smoke formed around the main character. Bei Jin closes his eyes and exhales. He looks at his hands and asks if it's all over. He wonders if the star power attracted by the six paths of reincarnation should really be so simple. A black and purple stone appears nearby. The main character looks at him with a small smile and said that now it looks like the truth. Dark purple energy concentrates around him. A third stone materializes nearby, many times larger than the previous two. The main character looks at him and says that this is the third star flame. He is enveloped in a golden flame. The golden flame gives way to blue, and beads of sweat appear on his face. The flame turns green and he clenches his teeth. The green color now changes to purple. Energy from six stones of different colors flows to Bei Jin. He wonders if the six paths of reincarnation correspond to the six types of star flames and adds that such an awakening is unprecedented and dangerous. A blue whirlpool appears under the protagonist's feet. He says that the greater the danger, the greater the benefits. Streams of blue energy completely covered the main character, creating a cocoon. He says that he will use this to harden his body and asks Nirvana to revive him. Rebirth, purification of essence. He meditates inside the cocoon and the black and green parts leave his body. A dark figure meditates in the middle of the starry space. There are many clouds around the cocoon. Cracks appear on the cocoon. Its top half breaks. The main character clenches his fists, and purple energy circulates around him. He concentrates the golden energy in his hand and says that the body has been restored and the poison has been completely removed. He adds that the six paths of reincarnation deserve to be a legendary secret art that can change one's destiny. He puts his fingers to his temple and says that the awakening is now complete. A magic circle appears behind him with six smaller circles inside. He wonders what he awakened. After awakening, the body improves depending on the awakened class. The magic circle depicts a sword, bow, dagger, darkness, hammer and staff. Strong warrior physique. The main character clenched his fists. He runs quickly, showing the speed and agility of a thief. It concentrates blue streams of magic and shows the magician's insight. The main character draws a bowstring, which shows his keen vision as an archer. He has fiery wings and a golden aura around him, which personifies the unshakable will of the night. Many monsters with red eyes appear around him, which refers to the specific perception of the summoner. The main character with a magic circle behind him wonders if he has awakened the six classes and is it really thanks to the art of the six paths of reincarnation. He puts two fingers to his temple and with a surprised expression on his face says that he knows a lot from his past life but he has barely heard a couple of times that a person had at least two classes, and he suddenly got everything. All six classes gathered into one personality. He clenches his fists and says that with a body like this, he will undoubtedly surpass his previous self. He tells the villains that they just need to wait and his revenge will not keep them waiting long. Bei Jin looked outside the cocoon. He says that star space has begun to dissipate and the awakening procedure will soon end. He says it's time to leave and comes out of the star gate and is enveloped in golden energy. The guy made a serious expression on his face. As he exits the gate, he meets Fan Bin. He asks the main character why he crawled out of the slums and came to awaken, and then calls him trash, wasting resources. Bei Jin shoos him away with an angry expression. The thief made a surprised expression on his face. The main character walks by, 
and Fan Bin has drops of sweat running down his face. He turns and calls the main character stupid and asks how he dares talk to him like that. His eyes turn red and he wonders why the main character did not die after the last poisoning and adds that he will kill him himself. He takes out a dagger and, calling the main character a fool, says that today on behalf of his parents he will teach him a lesson. Fan Bin makes a dash towards Beijin, and the main character tells him to stop. A green trail remains behind the thief. He makes a snake attack and an image of a snake appears near him. The protagonist, with a serious expression on his face, thought that this was bronze rank charge and snake attack. The skills of an E rank thief who really intended to kill him. He doesn't understand why. Being a thief, he doesn't hide and doesn't carry out hidden attacks. The main character examines the attacking enemy and thinks that given his experience as the strongest god of war, in such a useless attack he sees many open spaces. Fan Bin makes a dagger attack and the snake opens its mouth wide. The main character dodges this attack and thought that, in addition, as many as six classes had awakened. He raises his hand to strike and thought that even if they have a difference of two ranks, he can hit him in the face. He punched the guy in the cheek. Fan Bin flew far back, and the main character was enveloped in fiery streams of energy. The guy with the metal glove is surprised that the main character sent an E-rank thief flying with one hit. The thief lands on his feet and wonders how the protagonist was able to get him and assumes that he must have been lucky. The main character, with concern on his face, thinks that he just woke up, so he doesn't have class skills yet and taking advantage of the effect of surprise, he was able to hit this Cretan. He put on a serious expression and thought that this was not enough to defeat him. Between them comes Chaibo, who tells Fan Bin that he openly intended to kill someone who had just undergone awakening and asks him if he wants to go to jail. The guy replies that the main character tried to wake up many times, but to no avail, and he knows it. He tells the captain of the guard that he needs to be fired for abuse of power, because he gives such weaklings a chance and covers for them. Chaibo points his thumb at the main character and tells the guy that it is not for him to teach the captain of the guard. But what about the awakening of Bei Jin? Any sighted person can confirm this. The thief wipes his face as people around discuss the protagonist's unusually strong blow, and the fact that an ordinary person would not be able to parry such an attack. Fan Bin, with a dissatisfied expression on his face, thought that this was impossible and his body had been under the influence of poison for so long that it began to collapse and mentally asked if it was possible to awaken the class with such a body. The guard captain holds a device in his hand that scans the main character. The screen says that his awakened class is warrior. Chai Bo tells the guy that he awakened the warrior class, which explains his blow. The man in the jacket says that Fan Bin was unlucky because he, being a thief, attacked a warrior head-on. The guy in the green t-shirt asks if he really awakened the warrior class, because when he awakened it, he was not that strong. Drops of sweat flow down the protagonist's face. He thought that the awakening of the sixth grade was too shocking an event, and if they found out about it, then someone stronger might target him and then he would be in complete trouble. He adds that fortunately his soul is strong and he hid his aura with the help of soul power, thanks to which everyone only sees the warrior class. Chai Bo touches the main character's shoulder and congratulates him, and then says that his parents would be proud of him. He hands the student warrior card and tells the guy that since he has awakened, he needs to go to the warrior guild to study and improve, and then adds that he needs to try to discover the accompanying talent in himself in order to become a real high-level awakened one. He explains that the main character has already lost a lot of time, so it's better not to delay. Bei Jin thanks the guard captain. He asks him when the monthly talent assessment will take place. The captain of the guard replies that today and asks the main character if he sees these armored cars and explains that this is a group that leaves the city to evaluate talents. He wonders why the main character is asking and hopes that he is not planning to conduct a check now. The main character answers Chai Bo that he guessed correctly. The captain of the guard looked seriously at the main character and asked if he had gone crazy, and then said that there was only one attempt at this. He tells the main character that he has finally awakened and asks if he wants to lose his only chance. Six classes of cards fly among the blue energy. When people undergo awakening, they are given the status of disciple. Sunlight illuminates half of the luxurious building. Students study and improve their abilities in the guild for one minus three years, and having received enough knowledge, they are sent to a talent assessment. Only there can one obtain the talent accompanying the class and after that, they begin to be considered truly awakened. Chaibo, with a menacing expression on his face, explains that the accompanying talent is a passive skill and each class can only get one. 
He continues that he can be both good and bad and this will determine further achievements. And then he tells the main character that he needs to prepare well. And then he will be able to perform well in the assessment. And this is the key to getting good talent and that is why he must take this seriously. The main character smiles and tells Chai Bo not to worry because he is confident. The main character heads towards the armored car. There are a lot of people around in combat gear. Fan Bin looks at the main character and says that he just woke up and already wants to take the talent assessment. He adds that he poses a threat while alive and we need to think about how to get rid of him. Bei Jin takes notice of the thief and thinks that he is an ungrateful scoundrel who is still planning to kill him. The light of the Stargate enveloped the city, and many monsters lurked outside. A monster with wings and horns looks at the created barrier. These monsters are extremely evil and have a violent hunger for human souls. Individually, the monsters are afraid of the light of the Stargate and do not dare to approach the city. Many monsters gathered into a large horde. If enough monsters gather, their thirst overcomes their fear, and this catastrophic wave rushes towards the city. Monsters attack people within the city. In the history of mankind, there are many cities captured by monsters, because when the Stargate is destroyed and the starlight goes out, countless people become food for the monsters. Thus, no matter how many awakened ones resist the catastrophic wave and protect the city, heroes go towards their enemies. They fight dangerous monsters. It is a war in which the awakened sacrifice themselves and become martyrs in defense of humanity. The tombstones are located in the middle of the starry sky. Each martyr with an unbending will calls on the light of the star gates and gains immortality under the cover of starlight. The many tombstones emit massive amounts of star energy, distorting space and creating a special dimension known as the starlight gift lands. Wind currents circulate around the ball. There, each newly awakened person takes part in talent evaluation to continue the glory of the ancestors. They receive accompanying talent inherited from their predecessors. An armored car drives away from the Stargate. On either side of the car there are fences with barbed wire at the top. Bei Jin was reading a book and thought that the magician's insight was really useful, because he had already practically read such a thick book. The book is called Heroes of the City of Dawn. He thought that the city was mostly inhabited by undead. He adds with a smile that he should focus specifically on monsters of this type, and although the tests differ from city to city, most of the rules of the land of gifts of starlight are unchanged. The main character with a serious expression on his face thinks that in a past life he was born into an ordinary family without any support from his elders, and it is a miracle that then he was able to obtain the accompanying rank 30 talent. Gold rank talent one of 10,000 people, silver rank talent one of 1,000, bronze rank talent one of 100 people. Iron rank talent can be achieved by one in 10 people, while the majority receive lower rank. The main character stands on a gold rank tablet, shrouded in purple flames. One in 100,000 or even millions receives an epic rank talent. With a serious expression on his face, he thought that this time he could aim higher and perhaps he would be able to obtain an epic talent. There are many graves around the monument. The heroes enter through the metal gate. Some of the heroes say that they hope to obtain the accompanying skill of the bronze rank and become rich. Another hero tells him that only one in a hundred gets it. The main character walks with a book in his hands to the gate, and people nearby are discussing his awakening. Some of them mockingly say that by relying on the resources of their parents and having exhausted so many attempts, even a pig would awaken. He assumes that the main character has become dull from waking up, since he is reading a book in such a place. The main character with an upset expression on his face thought that these guys became awakened disciples and studied for three years in major guilds, so he wonders why they are so ignorant. Yellow particles fly near the graves. The main character thought that most likely the guilds provide only basic knowledge, and truly valuable information is distributed only among high-ranking awakened ones. He adds that fools do not know that when testing the lands of the gifts of starlight, the most important thing is not strength, but wisdom, will and courage. One of the awakened ones points at the girl and asks Lin Zai if she is from the Lin family. A girl with purple hair stands next to her two bodyguards wearing demon masks. One of the observers says that she awakened at the age of 11 and is the greatest genius. Another observer asks if she shouldn't have taken the talent assessment sooner if she awakened five years ago. Another observer tells him to forget it because they don't understand geniuses. The main character looks at the girl and notices that her aura is not strong and she is not stronger than an ordinary awakened student but she has a dense concentration of soul power. Six figures stand on a small hill. These are the guardians of the graves of the lands of the gifts of starlight. The guy with long hair and a bow on his back is a senior member of the Dawn City Archer Guild with C-rank combat ability named Saigong and he is 34 years old. 
Duan Zha, 36 years old, is a senior member of the Dawn City Warrior Guild with C-rank abilities. He has a black beard and a two-handed sword on his back. Duan Zha approaches the archer and says that he heard that the daughter of the Lin family awakened the archer class at the age of 11. He adds that she has been preparing for so many years and apparently the evaluation will be fruitful, and his archer guild will receive real treasure. Zai Gong smiles and crosses his arms. He says that there is no need to judge so quickly, because assessing talent depends on luck and it is too early to say something like that. He thought that according to the inside information, the Lin family had been preparing all this time, targeting high-ranking accompanying talent and they were confident in their abilities. He is not sure if Duan Jia should talk about this because he is afraid that he will die of envy. The warrior props his chin and asks if he really thinks so, and then agrees with him and adds that the accompanying talent depends on luck and adds that maybe an iron rank talent will work out. The two of them are angry at each other. The archer asks the warrior if he is trying to cast the evil eye. The warrior replies that he is telling the truth and adds that this has already happened. A man with long hair watches them and thinks that they are arguing again. He tells them not to waste time and start the assessment quickly. A man in armor with a yellow aura asks if everything is in place and believes that they don't need to tell them anything about assessing talent, because they already know everything. He adds that before entering the lands of the Gifts of Starlight, he intends to pay tribute to the ancestors who rest here, because this is their heroic sacrifice, allowing them to continue living in the world of monsters. All participants bow. The knight says that luck smiled on them and they awakened, and today they are here to continue the legacy of their ancestors and fight for the future of humanity. Ghostly entities appear from the graves. The knight continues and says that these lands are dangerous, and this is their first battle to become real awakened ones and if they do not take this seriously, they may die. Saigong says that these lands are only open for one day, so they need to take advantage of this opportunity. Duan Jia adds that the talent they get here will depend on luck. Near the monument, luminous star patterns are formed. A portal opens with a starry sky inside it. The beginning of the assessment is announced and all the awakened go into the portal. They stand among many graves. A guy with a short haircut points at the main character and calling him stupid, says that he continues to read the book and adds that he really came here unprepared and wants to die. A big guy approaches the main character and tells him that he knows him. He looks gloatingly at the main character and asks if he is the famous fool named Bei Jin and says that if he wants to cram books, then let him go read somewhere in the closet. He gets angry and asks the main character what he is staring at and whether he wants to be beaten. Bei Jin passes by him and turns the page of the book and tells the fat man that he better take care of himself. The guy turns to the main character and asks how he dared to call him fat. The guy is enveloped in black energy and a ghostly image is formed. A black barrier appears around the fat man. One of the observers says that the guy entered the heroic spirit assessment zone. Spider-shaped monsters appear around him, causing him to scream. Fat Man fights the spiders, and the observers wonder how they will cope with these spiders with F-rank ghost faces if they are not yet true awakened ones. The Fat Man lies on the ground, and the observer notices that the heroic exam was failed and the guy received the usual white talent rune. Many barriers with test subjects inside appear around the main character. One of the barriers disappears and the guy with short hair who was inside it says that he passed the assessment and received a bronze rank. He thanks the heroic spirit of the ancestor. Many barriers around disappear while the main character passes by them. This is a test of the heroic spirit in the lands of the Gifts of Starlight. If you pass, you receive an accompanying talent of a certain rank from the heroic spirit of the ancestor. But if you fail, you can only receive a talent of a lower rank. The main character is distracted by a female voice asking if he wants to look inside. It was Lin Zai, who said that in the far reaches of these lands, one can obtain a top-rank talent, but the evaluation of the spirit will be more terrible and may even be life-threatening. She suggests that he think carefully before moving on. The main character turns his gaze back to the book and thanks the girl for the warning, and then says that he will give her advice and adds that relying on external forces cannot pass the assessment of the heroic spirit. The girl has a drop of sweat running down her face. She wonders if he was talking about her bodyguards. The bodyguard takes off the mask and reveals the face of a doll behind it. She says that just in case, the family has prepared E-rank dolls and even real awakened ones will not immediately open them. She doesn't understand how he understood everything as a student. Bei Jin walks with a book in his hands and says that if this book is true, then somewhere nearby there must be a heroic spirit of a silver rank warrior, and wonders why he has not appeared yet. A blue beam flies at the main character. Bei Jin dodges the surprise attack. A heroic spirit appears in black armor and with a sword. He looks puzzled. 
a golden image of his soul appears above the main character. He apologizes and says that he came to get the accompanying epic rank talent. The spirit disappears and the main character says that perhaps this silver rank ancestor spirit felt that his soul was different from the others and the soul energy was really good at attracting their attention. He says with a serious expression that this exam lasts only one day and he can't waste any more time and needs to quickly get what he came here for. The main character looks at the map in the book and said that in these lands, apart from the dim twinkling of stars, there is complete darkness and therefore it is difficult to navigate here and easy to get lost, and then adds that fortunately, all the heroic spirits of the ancestors are recorded here, and they can be used as coordinates and find the shortest path. The main character looks to the side and says that the location of this spirit was correct, which means the book did not lie, and then turning right, he will find himself in the farthest part of the lands of the Gifts of Starlight. He makes a dash and pushes off the ground. He deftly dodges blue rays. Not far from Beijin there is a ghost with a bow, and a ghost with a hammer and shield. The main character wonders why they are fighting and adds that apparently he underestimated the attractiveness of his soul to the spirits of his ancestors. He raises his hand and with a smile on his face apologizes and adds that he is here for a talent of epic rank. The ghost looked at the main character. A ghost appears in front of him with a naked torso and an axe in his hand. To his left, the ghost of a girl with a dagger flies by. To his right appears the spirit of a magical girl wearing a hat and holding a book in her hand. He apologizes to them. Bei Jin entered the forest and wanders among the trees. He thought that he had attracted many people along the way, and it seemed that this time he had a high chance of obtaining an epic rank accompanying talent. He pays attention to the sound coming from the side. A guy peeks out from behind a tree and calls Lin Sin stupid because he warned her. He sees a huge golden dome in which the battle is taking place. A hail of arrows is directed at the girl and her dolls. The girl asks what is happening. She doesn't understand why the Lin family ancestor is so angry. He prepared three magic arrows for archery. The arrows stuck into the ground. Ghosts are formed from them. They are E-rank skeleton hounds, which are black dog-like skeletons with blue energy. The girl notices that the arrows have turned into three-legged E-rank monsters. She assumes that this is not an exam of the heroic spirit but that the ancestor wants to kill her. The girl dodges hounds in a hail of arrows. The girl pulls the bowstring and tells the spirit that she is his descendant and asks why he is trying to kill her. She releases an arrow and, with an alarmed expression on her face, asks him to name the reason if she offended him. The spirit pulls the string and tells her twice that she is unworthy. Another arrow heads straight for Lin Sin. The girl steps back and a skeletal hound jumps on her. A stream of blue energy is directed towards the hound. The girl is among the smoke and says that grandfather always says that her abilities are the best and he is the hope of the revival of their family. One of the dolls lost half of its body and the other an arm. The girl says that her grandfather always said that her abilities are better than anyone else and she is the hope for the revival of their family. He wonders why the ancestor was so angry and repeats that she is unworthy. The girl says that there must be a reason and cries. The spirit prepares to shoot again and tells her that she is unworthy and needs to get out. He aims at the girl with a bow, and she screams and asks what she did wrong and asks him to answer. The main character asks the girl if she still hasn't realized what she did wrong. She pays attention to the main character and asks why he is here. The spirit turns his attention to the main character with a surprised expression on his face. The girl with tears in her eyes says that after her awakening at the age of 11, she did not relax for a moment and practiced diligently, even passing a harsh riddle. She adds that before coming here, she tempered her soul to the limit of an awakened disciple and worked so hard on her development so that the heroic ancestor spirit would recognize her. She puts on a serious expression and says that she is the most outstanding genius of the Lin family in this century, as well as an archer with great potential. She pulls the bowstring and her body is enveloped in flames. She says that if she comes face to face with the spirit of her ancestor today, even if she dies, she will still shoot an arrow. She looks at her hand and wonders if it resonates with the spirit. The main character closes his eyes and smiles. He replies that it seems so and adds that in this exam it is not strength that is important, but will encourage. He adds that she took two dolls with her and this is not cheating, but still a cowardly act. The girl with a drop of sweat on her cheek thought that she understood what he meant. The girl looks at the main character and wonders who he is and adds that such a person cannot be unknown in the city of dawn. The exam is passed and the barrier dissipates. The girl breathes heavily and says that she has finally passed. The spirit directs his hand in her direction and she is enveloped in golden energy. 
The girl has a mark on her forehead and says that she received the accompanying talent of her ancestor. The main character, looking at her, says that this is not bad, because she received the accompanying talent of the gold rank and it seems that she will have a bright future. The archer's spirit moves back into the grave. The girl thanks the main character, with a calm expression on his face. He tells her that since she received the talent, she needs to leave quickly. He adds that the heroic spirits of the ancestors do not cause harm. But after many years they can mutate into special evil and cruel spirits and if she meets one, she will find herself in a very dangerous situation. The girl answers with the word okay and asks the main character why he came here, because this is the zone of gold rank spirits. Bei Jin leaves and says that of course, he came for the best accompanying talent. The girl asks him if he also wants a gold rank talent and adds that his aura is weak compared to other awakened students. The main character asks what she knows and asks her to help her keep it a secret and not tell anyone. The girl wonders why he is acting so arrogant. The girl with surprise on her face is he really going further, considering that they are in the gold rank zone. She wonders if he is heading to the deepest part of the Starlight Gift Lands. The gate is surrounded by golden chains. The main character wonders if this is the deepest part of the lands of the Gifts of Starlight, the so-called projection of the Gates of Hell. He closed the book and said that without a doubt he was on the right path. He tenses up and says that there is high pressure, and the fighting ability of the Guardian Monster is at least at the advanced D rank level. A bead of sweat runs down his face. He says that the gap in spiritual energy is too big and even if he does not attack him, the spiritual pressure makes itself felt and even when he is far away, his body can barely stand it. All ranks of spiritual energy, F rank, 1 minus 399 points, E rank, 400 minus 699 points, D rank, 700 minus 999 points. Bei Jin represents the image of a huge dog-like monster of advanced D rank whose spiritual energy is over 900, while the protagonist's spiritual energy is 30. He stopped straining and thought that although these lands do not exactly rely on combat power, if his body cannot withstand this so-called experience, then wisdom and courage will be useless. The main character spreads his arms wide and thought that the concentration of spiritual energy is dozens of times higher than in the outside world and this is the best place for development because several hours have passed since the start of the assessment and he still has time and needs to quickly become stronger. He begins to meditate using a secret art from his past life, Endless Gong Kai. Infinite Gong Kai is an epic rank secret technique that he accidentally obtained in his past life and there are various reasons why he was able to achieve so much back then. But this technique was irreplaceable. A large blue magic circle appears behind the main character. He is enveloped in blue energy. He thought that the energy was being absorbed faster than in the past and that was because he had gained grade 6 and had an increased absorption rate as a buff. Streams of energy flow towards the main character. He thought that there was a dense concentration of spiritual energy here and he could absorb it as he wanted. The guy thought that at such a speed, to get results that take others years, he would do it in one. Amount of spiritual energy, 31.32. The spiritual aura is very small. Amount of spiritual energy, 51.52. Spiritual energy becomes greater. Amount of spiritual energy, 99. Bei Jin exhales with relief. He looks at his hand and thought that the amount of spiritual energy had reached the maximum level for a student of 99 points. He says that before receiving the accompanying skill, he is unable to become a true awakened one and his body also cannot absorb more spiritual energy. He stretches his hand and says that spiritual energy of 99 points and strength increased by 6 times should be enough. On the stairs that lead to the gate, there is a monster in the form of a dog. He draws attention to the main character. Bei Jin notes that it is a hellhound, the most ferocious D-rank monster that has enough soul bone fire to burn a soul. Many purple silhouettes are watching what is happening. One of them asks if after hundreds of years someone has finally come to be assessed and adds that they will wait until he defeats the hellhound. The main character walks towards a huge blue and black hellhound. He says that in the end, this is just a puppy with a piece of the soul of the infernal Cerberus. The monster runs towards the main character with a much superior aura. The guy thinks whether this is suppression of spiritual energy. He says with a serious expression that if this had happened earlier, he would have been scared. A magic circle appears behind the main character. Endless Gong Kai, Breakthrough. He says that this type of spiritual energy suppression is useless against him. The main character quickly moves and attacks its paw as the ground beneath it collapses. The main character makes another blow with the dagger. Her wound was healing quickly and the protagonist thought that is expected. With his current combat power, he could barely scratch her. 
He jumps away from her paw and calls her just a weak puppy. The hound opens its mouth and its deafening roar spreads out to both sides in the form of streams of energy. The main character pushes away, but was able to stay on his feet, and then says that the monster got angry after being provoked. The hound jumps straight at the main character. She lands next to him and opens her huge mouth with sharp fangs. Bei Jin ends up on her face, and the hound does not understand what is happening. He says that after all, these are just lands for evaluating awakened students and where would they get a real D-rank hellhound for the sake of evaluation. He flicks his index finger on the dog's head. It immediately crumbles after such exposure. The main character lands on the ground and says that as a student, he is strong. But how much stronger can he become, considering that in these lands, the key to success is wisdom, will and courage. Bei Jin looks at the floating particles left in the air by the hound. He says that he only provoked her, and she got angry. He adds that real hellhounds are immortal, and like all immortal creatures, they are alien to emotions, not to mention falling into a rage. The main character looks at the gate and says that this is just a projection to scare the candidate, to test whether he has the fighting skills and courage to resist such a monster. The gate opens and the main character heads towards it. He asks if this is the gate of hell and adds that he is a little excited. He goes inside the void. The gate slams shut immediately after Bei Jin entered. Blue lights are burning on either side of him. He says that this is the farthest corner of these lands when he looks at the fountain. He adds that it doesn't look like hell and is more like the Valley of Sacrifice, and then wonders if there really is an epic rank. The main character turned his attention to something with a worried expression on his face. An orange beam is directed at him and he says that this aura has reached S rank. The main character is attacked from a jump by a spirit in armor with a sword in his hands. He thought about how strong the spirit was and how he could die from it. He looks at the spirit with a serious look. He is enveloped in golden energy. In front of Bei Jin is an epic rank heroic spirit with purple eyes. The main character tells him to calm down. Both of them are enveloped in golden energy. He tells the spirit to stop doubting with a small smile and adds that he didn't get here because of his luck and wants to see what epic rank can do. The spirit, calling the guy a simple student, asks how he dared to come here and whether he is tired of living, since he wants to see what a spirit of epic rank is capable of. The main character says that in tribute to his past life, he offers to test it through negotiations, because in the end, the main thing in this test is strength. He adds that otherwise the spirit must admit that it cannot compete with the disciple. He thought that it seemed like an epic rank spirit had retained all the knowledge from its past life, so it would be much stronger than a gold rank spirit. The spirit with a scar on one eye calls the main character eloquent, and asks if he thought that when he got here he could defeat a representative of epic rank. He calls the guy naive and adds that he will show him what the power of a heroic spirit of epic rank means. The blade of the spirit sword turns into flames. A lot of golden energy appears around the main character. He stands in the middle of what looks like an arena and wonders if he got here in a second. There is a lot of smoke around him. He asks if his spiritual energy has reached ranky amount of spiritual energy, 400. He sits down next to the spirit, who has a sword stuck in the ground. The spirits fly above them and say that the words of the warrior spirit were so arrogant, and they will see what he says when he gets there. Another spirit says that Ling Wei waited until they were distracted and secretly made his way to the guy himself, and then calls him pathetic. Another spirit says that Ling Wei reached S rank during his lifetime and he assumes that in the same way. The spirit concentrates energy over his hand and says that for the first time in hundreds of years a student has come here. But for students the epic rank is too heavy, but the main character has an incredible physique, as if belonging to all classes at once. He adds that the young man truly has extraordinary talent. The spirit with a hand in his pocket asks what Ling Wei is doing, considering that the guy has already passed. A spirit with a large physique spreads his arms to the sides and says that this is against the rules and asks Ling Wei to let them check it too. The main character holds a sword in his hand and says that the epic rank is so powerful that it was able to transport him to the arena in the dream world. The spirit throws out his sword and it sticks into the ground. He spreads his arms to the sides and says that in the arena of the dream world they both have ranky. And being in the same position, if he makes even one mistake, then the main character will pass the test. Bei Jin says with a menacing expression that they have the same rank, but the spirit does not use weapons in battle with him. He asks if, based on the experience of an s rank god of war, he can defeat him. The main character quickly waves his sword near the spirit, who thought that this was incomparably skillful swordsmanship and wonders whether the student is capable of such a thing. The spirit fights off numerous blows from the protagonist and thought that even with a weapon in his hands it would be difficult to resist such a merciless attack. 
the main character attacks the spirit from above. The spirit clenched his teeth and said that he could not evade. Bei Jin stopped his sword blade at the spirit's shoulder, who wondered how this was possible. He wonders if the guy's skills are stronger than his own and adds that it feels like he is fighting a war god of at least SS rank, and then says that he has never seen such a person even in his lifetime. An image of Meng Jin with a scar on his cheek appears behind the main character. The spirit calls him a true genius. The main character says not to worry about him. He and the image of his soul put the sword forward and the guy tells the spirit to give it his all in this battle. The heroic spirit makes a small bow. He returns the sword stuck into the ground back into his hand. The spirit takes a fighting stance while the main character attacks from above. They exchange numerous blows. Sparks appear from strong blows of swords. The main character knocks the sword out of his opponent. The main character smiles and says 10 strikes. He points his sword at the floor and tells the spirit that he has lost. The spirit accepts its defeat. The main character smiles and thought that this is the perfect test and this should be enough to get the accompanying epic rank talent, and with it, the starting point of this life will be much higher than the last one. The spirit disappears and Bei Jin asks where he is and what about his talent. The main character, with concern on his face, wondered if he had really overdone it so much that he had disappeared and added that the epic spirit could not do that. The main character is meditating and Ling Wei appears next to him. The spirits notice that he has returned and ask if the test is over and add that since Ling Wei did not transfer the talent, it means the guy lost. The main character meditates with his eyes closed. His consciousness is now in the arena. The purple spirit asks why he has not returned to consciousness yet and adds that he is still in the dream world arena and then asks Ling Wei if he has completed the test. The heroic spirit with a serious expression says that he has lost. One of the purple spirits asks if he really lost to this man. Another spirit asks if he is joking, because this is impossible and assumes that Ling Wei gave in. He replies that he did not give in and truly suffered a complete defeat and adds that this young man's skills are not inferior to their skills, and also says that he has a plan. Leaves fly among the rocks. The spirit asks Ling Wei if he is crazy. The other replies that they can try. Another purple spirit says that even more so, but his words are not enough to convince them. He adds that he has an idea to make this plan even more crazy. Ghosts appear in front of the main character. He looks at the scene in front of him with concern on his face. Six epic rank spirits appear in front of him wearing equipment. The main character thought that he did not expect that in the city of Dawn, in the most remote place, powered by starlight, there would be so many heroic spirits of epic rank. He wonders what kind of fierce battles were once fought here. The heroic spirit with the beard thought that even at the sight of the six of them, he did not blink an eye and mentally asks him to show what backed up his courage. The spirit rubs his beard and tells the protagonist that he defeated him and received their approval. Around the old wizard there are five more heroic spirits with the rest of the classes. He says that now they want to invite him to take a test of a higher rank and fight with them, the six epic spirits, and then adds that if the main character defeats them, then each will grant him an accompanying talent. But if not, he will leave with nothing. The main character asks with concern on his face if this is true. The old man tells the young man that he should think carefully, because he can also leave now with the talent of an epic-ranked warrior. A girl with long black hair tells the main character that judging by his appearance, he does not have enough strength and it is better to leave with what he has. A girl with brown hair tied in a ponytail says that she thought they were going to have some fun. The main character puts his hand on his forehead and laughs, calling what is happening interesting. He adds that he understands what he means, but the challenge has already been thrown. He holds his sword at the ready and tells them that their resolve to face countless monsters and create a better world is still strong. An image of Meng Jin appears behind him. He adds that he accepts the challenge and offers to start. The old man calls the main character self-confident. A spirit with short black hair and a goatee calls the main character arrogant, and he likes it. The main character in a fighting stance announces the start of the test. The old man concentrates golden energy in his hands and tells the young man to be careful. A thief with two knives and a knight prepare their weapons for battle. The main character, with a serious expression on his face, thought that the six elders had known each other for many years and they definitely had mutual understanding and some kind of agreement, and first he had to destroy all this. The thief disappears from his place and the main character thought that he would deal with him first. The thief appears behind the main character. Bei Jin starts to turn towards him and notices that he has sneaked up from behind. He turned and thought that an archer's reflexes were no joke. He raises his hand to attack and says that with the same rank, in a battle between a warrior and a thief, the second is at a disadvantage. The thief is surprised by this move on the part of the guy. 
The thief is pushed far to the side after being hit. An epic rank thief flies against the wall and leaves the battle. The knight thought that the main character would defeat them all, considering that he dealt with the thief with one blow. Arrows and fireballs fly at the main character, and a hound runs towards him along with a warrior and a knight. The knight tells the guy not to be so self-confident and adds that now they will fight seriously. The main character dodges fireballs using the speed of a thief and the reaction of an archer, and says that it is not so difficult. He deflects the arrows and says that the magician's insight also helps him a lot. Streams of blue energy appear near him. The main character jumps up and the old man was surprised that the paralyzing lightning strike did not work. The main character approaches the old man and thought that the knight's physique and will were blocking magic. He says that a magician at close range is as fragile as glass for a warrior. The magician is pushed into the wall and thus leaves the battle. Three blue arrows fly at the main character. He fights them off and runs towards the archer. He hits the arrow right at her and thinks that the warrior's enormous strength is amazing. An epic rank archer leaves the battle. The knight says that he cannot follow him. The summoner asks to hold the guy while she summons a huge bear. A huge bear appears, shrouded in purple energy. The main character appears with golden rings on his feet and he thought that he could not move. The knight casts sacred light slow on him. The bear attacks the main character with its clawed paw. The bear stops its paw near the main character. Bei Jin used the summoner's essence, affinity and summoned the monster. The bear attacks the knight with a sweeping blow. The knight raises his hand from the smoke and leaves the battle. The summoner girl asks with concern on her face if she has lost control of the bear. The main character approaches the girl and asks if a summoner who has lost his guardian has a chance to change the outcome of the battle. The girl is pushed into the wall and thus the epic rank summoner leaves the battle. Bei Jin stands in front of the warrior spirit and says that his comrades have lost and asks if he intends to continue. The warrior says that the main character has already defeated him before and sees no point in repeating it. The old man folds his arms behind his back and calls the main character a gifted guy and tells him that he passed the test with six representatives of the epic rank. They all concentrate energy in their hands in the form of multicolored spheres. The old man tells Bei Jin that his body, will, fighting spirit are all far superior to any test subject, including each of them in life, and asks him to accept their talents. The main character smiles and wonders if this means that he will still receive the talents of each class and then mentally asks if they can all coexist in one body. Six talents begin to merge together in one body. Energy shimmering in different colors envelops the main character. He says that the talents are mixed and the aura emanating from them already exceeds the epic rank. The archer asks if the accompanying talent is higher than epic rank. She asks what is this rank then? Drops of sweat appear on the protagonist's face and he thinks that at the last stage of the merger there is a very high probability of failure. He clenched his teeth and thought that there was just a little bit left. Orange streams of energy appear around him and his golden image appears behind him. He thought he couldn't fail. A heart appears in his hands, shimmering in different colors. Since the appearance of the Awakened Ones, various accompanying talents have appeared, iron, bronze, silver. In the minds of most, gold rank was already considered the highest rank of talent. There are many people standing near the star gate. As for the epic rank, for most ordinary people it was just a fairy tale. The main character wonders if there could be something above the epic rank, at the very top of this pyramid. He looks at his hands and says that this is an unprecedented mythical talent. In the background of the sixth grade images is a shiny heart. Mythic rank, heart of the brave. The heart of a brave man is a powerful talent and it manifests itself in the heat of battle after defeating an enemy, thanks to which you can obtain its source and restore strength, as well as increase its power. The main character imagines himself fighting with a sword and shield. The owner of the heart of a brave man bravely breaks through difficulties and in a hopeless situation he can ignite the spirit and blood, increasing his power ten times. Bei Jin imagines blue energy concentrating around him. The heroic spirits are gradually disappearing. The old man says that he did not expect that there is something above the epic rank and they are honored to see such a miracle. He adds that after so many years of waiting, they fought against a worthy opponent, and now they will leave without regrets. They hope that the main character will faithfully serve the City of Dawn and this entire world for the sake of Starlight. Heroic spirits finally disappear. The lights on the stone pedestals fade. He pours alcohol on the ground and says that he will definitely fulfill their wish. He leaves the book and alcohol on the ground. Lin Zai emerges from the portal and is enveloped in a golden aura. One of the people says that this is gold rank. Another person asks if this is the same daughter of the Ling family and adds that it is no wonder that she received a gold rank. 
another awakened says that he tried so hard to get the bronze rank and notes that this is the difference between them and geniuses. Saigong looks at the smiling girl and says that as expected from the first genius of the Ling family, she has received a gold rank accompanying talent. The girl with a red face touches her cheek and says that everything is thanks to Senior Zygong and adds that she is not that amazing at all. Zygong turns to Duan Jia and tells Ling Zai that she is so humble, because it is gold rank, and in the city of Dawn this happens once every ten years. He adds that some of the warriors guild boasted of their strength before the test. The warrior points his finger at the archer guy and tells him that their guild can only rely on luck, and then adds that sooner or later the warrior guild will also have a chance to get a gold rank. The archer looks arrogantly at the warrior and says that he is waiting for this moment. They look at each other like rivals, and this makes Lin Zai uncomfortable. She looks around and wonders where the main character is and whether he hasn't returned from the test yet. Zygong looks at the gate and says that it will close soon and he will report that the test is completed. The purple-haired girl asks the archer to wait for someone. The guy turns to her and said that if someone has not returned yet, then their test must have failed. The main character comes out of the gate. The girl says that he will come now. Zygong replies that he was thinking about who she was talking about, but it turns out it was about Bei Jin's trash. He adds that this guy was just hiding there to avoid the test with the spirits. The girl blushes when she sees the guy and realizes that his name is Bei Jin. A fat guy and two men with short hair look at the main character and think that he is flawed. Duan Jia asks the main character what rank he received in this test. He points his finger at the main character who is enveloped in a golden aura. He says that the main character has a gold rank. People are surprised by this and some of them notice that this time there are already two gold ranks. The main character smiles and thought that the heart of a brave man is a talent that allows him to show off any rank and demonstrating a gold rank, just like in his past life, is quite enough. He adds that this should attract the necessary attention from the warrior's guild. The main character looks towards the fat guy and calls them a bunch of fools, suggesting that they need to stop always trying to make fun of others and better think about how to improve their skills. The fat man with concern on his face says that they crossed the path of the future big shot of the City of Dawn. Lin Zai wonders how Bei Jin achieved gold rank, considering that he made it to the deepest. The main character puts his index finger to his lips so that the girl does not tell the truth. She blushes and wonders how many secrets the main character has, because he was in the very depths of the lands of the Gifts of Starlight. Duan Jia puts his hand on the shoulder of the main character, and he, with concern on his face, asks him if he has seen enough and reports that he passed the test. The warrior calls the main character a scoundrel and does not have time to finish what he wanted to say. He again puts his hand on the protagonist's shoulder and calls him well done, and then adds that it's not in vain that their warrior guild put so much effort into his training. One of the awakened ones calls Bei Jin shameless and adds that they didn't even know about this young man before. Another awakened one with a drop of sweat on his face wonders how he can be called a warrior in whom strength has been invested. Saigong says that the appearance of two gold-ranked fighters in this trial is already a historical event. Duan Jia looks at the main character with a smile, who is very uncomfortable with this look. The stargate shines brightly, overlooking the city. The archer guy says that this needs to be reported urgently, that this time as many as two have received the gold rank. One of the people on the street calls this a historical event and asks who these two are. The other guy tells him that one is the daughter of the Ling family, Ling Zai, which was expected, and the name of the second is not unfamiliar. He calls him Bei Jin, which Fan Bin hears and makes a worried expression. He gets angry when he realizes that the main character has received a gold rank and says that this is impossible. The Star Tower rises above a three-story building. City of Dawn, Warrior's Guild. A lot of people go to the Warrior's Guild. People discuss Bei Jin. One of them says that he is gifted and this is promising. The girl with her hair in a ponytail says that the main character is handsome and he's her type. The main character is embarrassed when he hears these words. The awakened girl calls the main one young and cute and says that she would have eaten him. Another girl suggests that the main character does not like girls and adds that her daughter just turned 17 years old and she suits him. The main character had a drop of sweat running down his cheek and thought that he seemed to have underestimated the influence of the gold rank. Bei Jin are handed an envelope, and on it is a card and a badge. Duan Jia tells the main character that from now on he is a full-fledged awakened of their guild and adds that he, as a representative of the warrior guild of the City of Dawn, welcomes him, and then laughs. He leaves and turning to the main character asks him to follow him so that he receives a suitable reward. Bei Jin thought that the guild seemed to treat its members well. In front of them stands the treasurer of the warrior guild with green hair, Chen Guang. There are a lot of weapons and armor around them. 
He asks Bae Jin if this is him and calls him a respectable young man. He hands over the box and says that this is a reward that comes with gold rank, and then asks to check it. There lies an unpredictable fist blade. Duan Jia says with a smile on his face that this is one of the strongest skills of the warrior class and tells the treasurer that he is so kind. Cheng Guang folds his arms behind his back and says that their guild doesn't often have a gold ranked awakened one, so they should put all their efforts into developing it, and then laughs. Further in the box there are 10 star stones of the initial rank and he adds that this is an excellent reward for the gold rank, because at one time he only had one such stone. The main character drew attention to the skill in the book. The treasurer tells the main character that learning new skills is most effective in the first days after waking up and he advises starting as soon as possible. The main character smiles and replies that of course he will do so. Fan Bin calls the treasurer his brother and asks him how everything went. He closes the door and tells his brother that he is more reliable in solving problems than him and adds that altered book has already been given to Bae Jin and he will begin learning the skill, and in a couple of days he will become insane. He imagines the main character with an angry expression on his face, spreading his arms to the sides. Cheng Guang, with a malicious expression on his face, tells his brother that at this moment he should send a request to the guild for a duel, and then he will get rid of him in front of everyone without a single mistake. Fan Bin puts one hand on the other and tells his brother that he always does everything perfectly and adds that if he gets rid of the main character, then the inheritance of the Bay family will go to him and he will thank him from the bottom of his heart. The treasurer replies that they are simply following orders from above and he can deal with the reward himself. Fan Bin imagines a photo of him, the main character, and their parents, where the glass cracked where the parents are. He puts his hand on his face and says that the main character, being a genius with a gold rank, will still die at his hands and everything that belongs to the Bay family will become his. The main character sits on the bed and says that he is afraid that the one who handed over the unpredictable fist blade was also not simple, because even Duan Jia with his C rank could not recognize the problem and if someone else had been in his place, he would have left trouble. The main character remembers Chen Guang's behavior and says that judging by his actions, he is also involved in everything, but wonders if this situation has anything to do with stupid Fan Bin. He adds that this song, the previous head of the awakened community, and the disappearance of his parents also seem strange to him. He touches his chin with his finger and says that it turns out that there are so many behind-the-scenes intrigues and mysterious personalities swirling around the Bay family. The main character looks at the book with a smile on his face and says that he will play along with them. He closed the book and said that the defect from instilling such talents in a beginner is very primitive, so he can easily win it back. He takes the box and says that if Duan Jia is nearby, then Chen Guang will not be able to interfere, especially since the main character has these 10 star stones that he will need. Star stones float above the box. Star stones are crystals that contain the concentrated power of a star gate, and they are divided into initial rank, middle rank, high rank and so on. By absorbing stargate energy through these crystals, awakened ones can quickly develop their power and improve their skills, it is considered a rare treasure. The main character, with a serious expression on his face against the backdrop of books, says that although he understands all the skills of a high and even divine level, but if he wants to quickly improve his strength, he must start over. Streams of wind appear around him. He says that although he did not study it in his previous life, he knows that unpredictable fist blade is a very strong entry-level skill, and can be used up to D rank. He adds that although developing this skill is quite difficult, it means nothing to him. Bei Jin clenches his fist and says that you need to use your fist like a blade and rotate it as if this piece of flesh is part of the sword. He adds that the concept of this skill is quite unusual and several key points for using spiritual energy have been messed up but he can correct this. He placed the stones around him and they were enveloped in blue energy. The main character says that he hopes that 10 initial rank crystals will be enough for him to fully master this skill. He is enveloped in blue streams of energy. His hand begins to hurt and glows purple. The energy on the hand intensifies and the main character feels as if someone is scraping his bones. His fist suddenly unclenches due to pain. The main character looks at his crippled hand and says that the unpredictable fist blade is the strongest basic skill of the warrior class, the difficulty of developing which he slightly underestimated and despite the fact that he awakened all six classes at the same time, his strength and flexibility have improved dramatically. He adds that if he completes the training in one go, he may damage his hands, but in 10 days or half a month he can get by without it. He continues that if any of the other warriors wanted to master this skill, it would take him at least one year. 
The main character smiles and says that it's more interesting this way. He concentrates blue streams of energy around his hand and says that this is a basic skill. Violet energy envelops his hand. The energy on the hand forms the shape of a blade. He takes the mosque and puts his hand with it to the side. He makes a strike using the F-rank skill, unpredictable fist blade and cuts the wall, which stands at an impressive distance from him. The main character moves his hand to the side and says that he didn't spend 10 star stones of the initial rank in vain and he has a whole day to master it. The main character looks at his sword and says that when he moves to the next rank, this skill will also rise to a higher level, and then adds that now he can go out. Fan Bin tells the main character who is leaving the room that he has returned. He brings a document to the main character and tells him that this is a challenge to a duel that will determine which of them will become the heir of the Bay family. The awakened ones around are watching what is happening. He asks the main character if he accepts the challenge. People around are discussing this official challenge while the main character stands in front of the fan bin. The main character calls his opponent ridiculous and adds that now he is also awakened and therefore his legacy will remain his. He asks why on earth he is getting involved in this matter and calls him an ungrateful scoundrel. Those awakened nearby notice that Fan Bin was raised by the Bei family and do not understand how he dares to argue with Bei Jin over the inheritance. People are calling for Fan Bin to be expelled. He turns around and tells everyone to look carefully at this paper, because it bears the official seal of the awakened community. He adds that this is the Bay family's business and there is no need to make this fuss. The awakened one with brown shoulder pads asks how the community allowed this conflict to arise in the first place. Another awakened one says that at the top there are only fools who decide matters in black and white. Another awakened one asks the previous one to follow his words and not bring trouble upon himself. Fan Bin with a smug face says that the Bay family estate has already been rewritten in his name and if the main character does not accept the challenge, then he automatically renounces all claims to the estate. And this is his home, where the family raised him all these years. The main character made an angry expression on his face and thought that he was angry because he was influenced by the memories of the previous owner of the body. He adds that this self-willed fool is not even worthy of his anger. Fan Bin holds the document in his hand with a smile on his face and asks the main character if he is ready to take on a life or death challenge. Something happened at lightning speed, and Fan Bin closed his eyes. The main character very quickly snatched the document from the guy and reads its terms. The thief, not understanding when he managed to look at his hand. The main character, holding a document in one hand, says that he accepts the challenge. Fan Bin thought that he didn't even notice his movements and assumed that such changes were related to the awakening of the gold rank. He thought with anger on his face that it was good that they edited the teachings of the unpredictable fist blade so that the main character would become uncontrollable in the midst of battle. The thief took out his daggers and thought that the end of the main character was near. People cleared the hall for their battle. Green-black energy concentrates around the Fan Bin. He suddenly appears to the left of the main character and uses the bronze rank talent, Charge. He swings to strike using the E rank skill, Snake Attack. An image of a snake appears above him, and the main character calmly watches what is happening. Beijin easily blocks the thief's blow and asks if this technique is happening again and maybe he should come up with something new. Fan Bin, with concern on his face, notices that the main character grabbed his dagger with one hand. He doesn't understand how this is possible, considering that he dodged. A purple blade appears on the main character's hand and he says that the warriors and their wonderful modified skill. He uses an unpredictable fist blade, causing the thief to be pushed back violently. Fan Bin rolls backwards and gets to his feet. He clenches his teeth and asks why nothing happened. The awakened one with short hair calls the main character well done. The awakened one with a large physique says that this is what this Fan Bin needs and let the thieves guild see their power. The guy with two swords on his back calls the thief trash and asks them not to mention the thieves guild, which has nothing to do with him. Duanja crossed his arms and said that it's not for nothing that this is a gold rank that appears once every 10 years. He mastered the unpredictable fist blade in just one day and has already brought it to such a level that he can crush an E-rank thief without straining. A guy in a business suit next to him asks if this is common for gifted people. The main character pushes off the ground with his foot. He makes a dash and quickly approaches the thief. He hits him with his blade, causing him to push back. The main character tells him that he didn't expect him to be so agile. Fan Bin shows his armor under his shirt and asks if the main character thought that he would wear a protective golden vest. He calls the main character an insignificant F-rank warrior and asks what he can do to him. One of the awakened ones aside from the thief says that he acted disgustingly, 
challenging the main character to a fight and wearing a protective vest. Another awakened one does not see anything wrong with this and adds that anyone can buy one for themselves, and wearing protection is not prohibited by the rules. Fan Bin, with an angry expression on his face, tells the main character that he was very lucky last time, but today he must die. The thief takes out his daggers and heads towards the main character. He uses the double snake attack skill, after which two images of snakes appear near him, which rush along with him towards the main character. Dae Jin calls one a narrow-minded fool. He defends against his attack with his purple blade. Fan Bin doesn't understand how he fought off the double snake attack so easily. The main character, with a small smile on his face, asks the guy if he really thought that he didn't know about the vest, because in fact, he understood from the first blow, and just decided to play along. He asks him if it is unpleasant to be disappointed again after seeing a glimmer of hope. The main character swings his arms and says that now there is no mercy, and tells the enemy to feel the real power of the unpredictable fist blade. He hits the thief in the face. He hits it many times at a time. Bei Jin hits especially hard, causing Fan Bin to be pushed far back. He lies on the ground and leans on his hand. He looks at the main character and asks why nothing is happening. Bei Jin asks if he wonders why nothing happens to him after mastering this skill. The thief notices in surprise that the main character knows everything. He tells him that if he is so stupid, it does not mean that the others are the same. He approaches the thief and says that he will leave him alive. Fan Bin has beads of sweat on his face. The main character asks to tell who is behind this and about his parents in exchange for mercy. The thief swallowed something he had in his mouth. He coughs up blood and the main character assumes that there was poison in his mouth. Fan Bin smiles as black lines appear on his face. He tells the main character that he will never know what happened to his parents and even if he is gifted, his powers are weak. He adds that the main character will be crushed like an ant. Bei Jin has a worried expression on his face. The thief dies in front of the main character and the rest of the awakened ones. The main character thought that this selfish and ungrateful thief agreed to die, but not reveal the truth. He thought with a sad face that it seemed like those behind all of this had a lot of power in Dawn City. And now that Fan Bin had died, they would definitely take the next step and it would put him in danger again. He thought that he couldn't wait to see how strong those who were hiding behind the scenes were. The main character leaves the guild and thought that now he is only an insignificant F rank and is very weak. But given the situation, increasing his combat power is a top priority. Someone in a business suit is watching the main character. The outskirts of the awakened community. The Stargate rises above residential buildings. Bei Jin meditates while sitting on his bed. He closed his eyes, and a blue crystal levitated in his hands. The crystal crumbles, and the dust on it falls on the protagonist's hand. A bead of sweat runs down his face. He says that this physique is amazing, and the rate of energy absorption is too high. He adds that he spent the last star stone. Bei Jin says with a smile that when he received F rank, his spiritual energy was equal to 105, and today it is already 246 units. In theory, one star stone is equal to 10 units of spiritual energy. He imagines an awakened person meditating with a stone. This is just a theory, but in reality, during the awakened one's mastery of skills, most of the energy is wasted. The awakened person absorbs only 10% of the energy during meditation. In fact, for an ordinary awakened person when mastering a skill, if the percentage of energy absorption reaches 10%, then this is already a good result. The awakened one absorbs 30% of the energy. If the absorption percentage is 30% or higher, then he will already be considered a gifted awakened one. The main character spreads his arms wide apart and says that after spending 20 star stones of the initial rank, he acquired 141 points, that is, the absorption percentage was 70%. He looks at his hand and says that in a past life, even when using the epic rank secret technique Infinite Gong Kai, the absorption percentage reached only 40% and it seems to him that in this body this technique will reveal itself in all its glory. He stretches by the window and said that it's a pity that this place is only the outskirts of the awakened community, so the stellar energy here is limited. Otherwise during this time he would most likely be able to raise up to 300 units of spiritual value. He touches his shoulder with his hand and thought that this song really suggests itself and adds that he first dealt with Fan Bin and then went to return the Bay family estate. Song sits at the office desk in front of the main character and tells him that after the estate was taken over by Fan Bin, it no longer has anything to do with the Bay family and upon his death, it is transferred to the ownership of the awakened community. He looks at the main character arrogantly and says that the main character has awakened, but is only an F rank and therefore will allocate him a community apartment, 
and then asks him to disappear. Bei Jin with a serious expression on his face says that for all of them the estate is such a tasty morsel. The main character thought about it and said that Song is a C rank awakened and with his current powers, he will not be able to resist him and therefore he needs to improve his skills. The main character puts his palm to his forehead and says that he miscalculated one thing. A bead of sweat runs down his face. He says that the Bay family has funds left in its account equal to the amount that is only enough for two starting rank star stones and it seems to him that over the years they have spent a lot of effort to make up for the shortcomings of his body. The main character exhales and says that he could not even think that the day would come when he would have a headache because of money problems. He takes a badge from his pocket. Bei Jin activates it. A blue projection appears with the name of the main character, his class and merits, the value of which is zero. He thought that he needed more star stones and needed to familiarize himself with the guild tasks with which he could earn extra money. Three missions appear, all of them F rank. According to the first task, he needs to return Lady Lo's underwear for 1,000 money and one merit. In the second task, you need to clear the outskirts of the city from stray epileptic skeletal dogs. The reward is 15 o money and two merits. In task three, you need to explore the ruins near the southern wall of the city in exchange for 10,000 money and 10 merits. The main character props his chin and says that the rewards for these tasks are good, but they give little merit. He adds that 100 merit points are exchanged for one starting rank star stone. He is thinking of trying D rank missions. He imagines images of Song and Cheng Guang and says that successfully completing a D rank task immediately after waking up will attract a lot of attention. He stands in the middle of the room and says that now he is under the wing of the Warriors Guild, so no one will dare to touch him. But if he goes too far, then all these big shots will immediately hatch, and he cannot yet openly resist them. He further looks through the list of tasks, thinking about how he can earn money without attracting too much attention. Bei Jin noticed something. He turned his attention to an E-rank mission to explore the surrounding area of the Moss Forest with a reward of 20,000 money and 20 merits. He zooms in on the face and says that it seems there is something interesting in this forest. The suburbs are the location of the Awakened. There are many cars in the middle of the mountains. The main character approached the sign and saw in which direction the Moss Forest. Lin Zai appears behind the main character and calls the main character. She asks if he also accepted the task with the Moss Forest. The main character notices that this is the same girl and agrees with her words. The girl with a reddened face approaches him and offers to join their ranks. The main character thought that she came too close. A man in armor appears. He tells Ling Zai that she should first ask the commander before calling anyone to the team. He says that for an E-rank team, an F-rank will only be a burden. This is an E-rank knight with purple hair, Lo Soon. The girl tells the knight that Bei Jin is not a burden. The main character smiles with concern on his face. A man with a white cloak approaches them and calls Lo Soon an ignoramus and adds that he is a test participant who received a gold rank. This is an E-rank archer, Tunbo. He introduces himself and extends his hand to the main character. They shake hands and the main character greets him and then calls him polite. The knight with a drop of sweat on his cheek asks what's wrong with the gold rank and adds that now he is, after all, an ordinary F-rank warrior. The archer guy asks the knight not to talk nonsense with an angry expression on his face. He says it's time to move out and they head into the forest. Blue particles fly in the forest. The awakened fight against wooden monsters in the vicinity of the moss forest. Lin Zai pulls the bowstring with a fiery arrow. The arrow hits the wooden monster and sets it on fire. This is an E-rank monster, a twisted ebony tree. The knight protects himself from the monster with a shield. Tunbo aims a fire arrow at one of the enemies. Many flames appear in the place where the arrow hit. Lo Soon says with a smile on his face that the commander dealt with this E-rank monster so easily. He approaches the main character and tells him if he understands that an E-rank task is not always within the capabilities of an ordinary F-rank. Lin Zai asks the knight what he is talking about with anger on his face. The girl comes up to him and says that the first arrow was hers and asks if he really wants to say that she is too worthless for this matter. The knight with concern on his face says that he is not talking about her, but about Bei Jin. The girl with an angry expression on her face says that if he says that about the main character, then he speaks about her too, because they both have an F rank. Tunbo looks to the side and notices something. He shouts and asks if this is an ambush attack and tells Ling Zai to be careful. A wooden stake flies into her face, and she closes her eyes. The main character catches a wooden stake and breaks it. He points his finger at the bushes where the enemy was. An E-rank thief from Team Tunbo with two daggers climbs a tree and says that he will sort it out. He jumped onto a twisted tree E-rank archer. He hits it a lot. 
the thief jumped back out from behind the bushes. A girl with a reddened face looks at the main character. The girl thanks the main character, and the guy replies that they are a team with a smile on his face. Lo soon thought with an angry expression that this worthless ballast was constantly finding ways to hit on Ling's eye. The main character looks at the knight with the pupils of his eyes and thought that he thought that there was something wrong with this part of the moss forest. Blue and green particles appear around the awakened ones. The glow of the stargate and the breath of darkness, the struggle between these two opposites never ends and adds that as long as there is darkness under the starlight, and among the darkness there are glimpses of starlight, there will be a balance of all that exists. The stargate brightly illuminates the city. Small vibrations from the breath of darkness in any area cause the local monsters to appear. Dark silhouettes of monsters stand among the vegetation. This is why more and more monsters appear in the outskirts of the moss forest. The main character is most interested in the fact that as the darkness thickens, more and more treasures will appear. This is his real goal. Something is shining brightly green in the middle of the forest. Tunbo holds a device with a screen and antenna in his hand. He installs the beacon in the ground and says that the last star beacon has been installed and the task of exploring the surroundings of the moss forest is completed. He calls everyone well done and orders them to return to camp. The main character smiles slightly and thought that a little later he would secretly return here alone. The knight throws up his hands and asks the commander if it's really time for them to return and adds that this is an E-rank reward and it won't be enough to divide among them all. He says that their team is strong enough and they can go a little deeper and see what else they can collect and then there will definitely be enough for all of them. Tunbo replies that he can try and turns to the others, and then asks if anyone has any objections. Lo soon tells the others to listen to the commander and they all go deeper into the forest together. The knight tells the main character that when they move deeper into the forest, he and his F rank will only be a burden for them and asks him to leave the team. Bei Jin thought with a smile on his face that this scoundrel was constantly looking for reasons to kick him out of the team. Lin Zai, with a serious expression on his face, tells the knight that the main character has earned a gold rank and his skills are not what he thinks. Tunbo stands opposite the main character and the girl and tells them that the moss forest is considered an E-rank terrain and the level of danger there is much higher than she assumes. And then he adds that already with her on the team he is under a lot of stress and cannot take Bei Jin as well. The girl has a drop of sweat on her cheek, he wants to object, but cannot. The main character raises his hand and says that Commander Tunbo is right and his strength is not enough, and the most reasonable thing, of course, would be to leave the team. He thought that he just wanted to go alone and, calling the knight stupid, wanted to make him happy and ruin everything. Tunbo puts his hand on the main character's shoulder and apologizes, saying that their powers are limited. He adds that he will share the reward for the task in the vicinity of the moss forest and with him. The main character replies that it's nothing and he himself understands the level of his strength, and then thanks the commander. Lo soon thought with a smile on his face that this fool would finally leave. The main character looks at the back of the group and says that the dark aura of the forest has intensified, and it is quite dangerous for any rank team to rush deep into the forest. The main character says that those two modest people from the group were not E-rank awakened. They are D-rank and adds that they are most likely bodyguards sent by the Ling family to guard her and the girl herself does not know about it. The main character puts his hand on the back of his head and with a smile on his face says that he is finally alone and can get down to business. Bei Jin jumps from the tree. He lands and says that the concentration of dark aura here is stronger than on the outskirts. He adds that they prefer to live near stargates, and these creatures also prefer places with an aura similar to theirs. An E-rank monster, a rabid, twisted ebony tree, jumps at the main character from behind. He turns around and says that the rabid monster, under the influence of a dark aura, decided to attack from cover. He dodges the blow with a purple blade on his hand and says that this will not work with him. He hits the monster. The twisted tree holds onto the impact site. The monster swings for another blow. The main character thought that he was using his powers at 70% and could only break through his defense. Bei Jin dodges and says that even this is enough because these black trees are very afraid of fire. The main character concentrates fire in his hand and thought that in this body he had not mastered such class spells, but it would not be difficult to cause a small spark of flame. He enveloped his unpredictable fist blade in flames. The monster runs towards the main character. Bei Jin strikes, leaving behind a burning monster. He turns around and says that by knowing the monster's weaknesses and using the right skills, one can achieve success and even an E-rank monster with strong defense can be defeated in one hit. The main character breathes heavily and says that summoning the flame and combining it with the skill of the unpredictable fist blade was expensive and too much spiritual energy was spent. 
A bead of sweat runs down his face. He says that it looks like he should start learning other skills as soon as possible. A white sphere rises into the air from the black smoke. The main character catches it with his mouth. He is enveloped in golden energy and he says that the spent energy is quickly restored and with each battle his skills will become more and more effective. The heart of a brave man is to restore energy. After defeating an enemy, you can get the source of his strength and restore your power and become stronger. He adds that this is a real gift and thus, he doesn't even have to worry about the duration of the battle. He sits down on the ground and reaches out to the dark crystal. He picks up the crystal and says that as the darkness thickened, these unclean astrolites, imbued with a dark aura, began to appear in the bodies of black trees. The star power in this astrolite is equal to only a tenth of that contained in star crystals. However, such astrolites contain a large amount of dark energy and in the hands of an ordinary person this astrolite can be extremely dangerous. The main character smiles and says that even if one of the awakened ones discovers the astrolites, for them it is a useless thing. He made the stone float above his hand and says that he is not like the rest of the awakened ones. He breaks the astrolite and says that he knows an epic secret art that is enough to purify the dark energy of the astrolite and obtain the pure energy of the stars. Bei Jin is meditating and enemies are approaching him from the bushes. He smiles and says that it looks like there is a large supply of astrolites here. Streams of wind appear around him. His sword is enveloped in flames. He says he's starting. Monsters surround the main character and attack him. He fights back with attacks from his enhanced sword. One of the monsters caught fire from his blow. He makes a lightning fast movement and strikes. One of the monsters almost touched the main character's face. Bei Jin dodges the tree's attack. He jumps to the side and thinks that he went too far, but with such a strong body, with the skill of a magician's insight and the agility of an archer, he was able to quickly react to the enemy's attacks. A drop of sweat runs down his face and he says that even though these black trees are E-rank, they are becoming too much. A golden energy envelops him and he asks if they think this is enough to scare him away. Heart of a brave man, restoration of energy. The main character makes a dash towards the enemies and prepares to attack. He performs a series of blows and thought that his strong physique along with the heart of a brave man will help him dodge the attacks of an E-rank monster and such a fight is something that he could not even think of as an E-rank. He strikes one blow after another, leaving a golden trail. He breaks the crystal and says that at this speed, he will achieve E-rank in a short time. He notices something behind him. The corpses of monsters fly away from the places where they lay. Beijin said that the corpses of these black trees were absorbed by another tree. He says with concern on his face that the strange things happening in this forest of moss have exceeded all his expectations. Streams of wind sweep through the forest. The main character looks into the distance and says that there is trouble again. He looks at the tree and says that because of these trees it seems that Moss Lem is alive. The main character is trying to get the roots of a tree. He immediately jumps back. Instead of the main character, the roots catch the stone and destroy it. The main character gets to his feet and rests his hand on the ground. He says that this is a destructive power and adds that faced with such a situation, even a small E-rank team and a D-rank awakened would be able to do little. The main character, with alarm on his face, says that he is just an ordinary F-rank. Here he is simply useless, because his strength is not even enough to compare with D-ranks. The roots surround the main character and he says that all he can do is dodge. Bei Jin concentrates energy in his hands using the infinite Kai Gong, accumulation of strength. He stands in the middle of many roots and thinks that this secret skill allows blood and spiritual energy to circulate in the body at a low speed. Without sudden movements a person becomes like stone and is difficult to recognize. The roots tower over the main character. He thought that these trees did not have eyes, they would not be able to detect him. He looks into the distance and says that it seems that with such strong changes, the energy source of the moss forest has undergone a mutation. The main character, with a serious expression on his face, said that the forest is so huge that if he wants to find the source of the mutation, it will be extremely difficult. He looks at the roots behind him and wonders how those gnarled trees tracked him and adds that even D-rank monsters with better perception would not be able to detect him. The roots attack past the main character and he realized that he was not their target. They are trying to hit a small tree creature. The small wooden monster jumps off the ground, dodging the attack. The main character looks at the little monster. The wooden monster holds its head in fear. He turns back with a scared face and sees the roots. The main character quickly moves from one place to another. He takes the little monster, saving his life. The roots move chaotically in random directions. The monster looks at the guy in fear. Bei Jin holds the little monster in his hands and looks around. He looks at this little creature and says that it has a lot of star energy in its body, 
and the dark aura did not affect it at all, and then asks it if it understands his speech. The little creature repeats one word with a smile on its face, Grum. Beijin said that this creature understands his speech and even thanks him. He looks at the baby and asks if he knows where the source of the dark aura is in this forest. The baby points in a certain direction and repeats again the only word he knows. The main character rejoices and asks if he really knows. He runs away with the little creature under his arm. The tree monster hits the knight's shield. Lo soon tells the commander to begin. Tunbo shoots a bow at the monster and they are engulfed in flames. The monster jumps straight at the magician. This monster is hit by the commander's fiery arrow. The knight exhales and looks at Lin's eye. He approaches her and says that this is how you need to deal with three rank black trees at a time for it to be effective. He adds that without the burden of Bei Jin, their team is progressing very quickly. The girl with a serious expression thought that this Lo Soon was disgusting and continued to act arrogantly. She adds that he didn't even understand how dangerous it was just now to fight three rank monsters at the same time and this is too much for their team. The girl thought about the fact that she doesn't even know how Bei Jin is, but assumes that his skills are not as simple as they seem. The thief of the group notices something and tells the commander that something is wrong here. He looks up and asks if they have noticed that the bodies of the killed trees have disappeared. The bodies of the monsters suddenly disappeared, leaving only cracked bodies in their place. The forest swallows the bodies of black trees. They notice that the roots of huge trees begin to move. Several roots are directed towards the night. He is enveloped in roots and asks Commander Tunbo to save him. He coughs up blood from the pressure on his body. The group leader tells everyone to be careful while looking at the night. He wonders what's wrong with these trees and adds that it looks like the whole forest came to life in an instant. Lo soon takes a step. His body has become like a monster and he tells the group that they will be buried here. Tunbo wonders if Lo soon took the ebony tree. He asks how this is possible, because these trees are E-rank and they could not deal with a person of the same level so easily. The converted knight asks the human awakened to die and runs towards them. Tunbo uses the E-rank skill, fire arrow, and aims at the monster. She heads towards him. The roots of the trees deflected the arrow. The commander is shocked that the arrow did not work. The monster jumps on the commander and says that he will trample him. The commander looks at the enemy in fear. Lin Zai shouts to the commander to dodge. He thought that he wouldn't have time to dodge and it would be the end for him. Someone attacked the monster with green gusts of wind, which repels it. The monster rests its hands on the ground. The thief carried the commander aside. The commander asks where he got such speed. He looked at the magician in surprise and said that the skill gusts of wind belongs to the D rank, and then asks them if they are awake in D rank. The magician removes his hood and now his long hair is visible with two long strands in front. He says that he did not think that they would be revealed this way. The thief behind him says that this is a hopeless situation and no one expected the moss forest to be so dangerous. The girl blushed when she realized everything. The magician replies that yes, her family sent them to keep an eye on her. The girl has a drop of sweat running down her cheek. She says that her father did it. The thief jumps on the monster and tells the girl not to worry and to leave it to them. The magician concentrates green energy in the staff. Green energy, which can be seen among the treetops, is directed towards the enemy. The beaten thief jumps back and asks how this is possible. He says this dark tree is growing too fast. The magician clutches his stomach. The monster looks much more massive. The thief adds that if this continues, then they will not come out of this battle alive. The monster screams loudly and the floor around it collapses. The magician concentrates green energy in his finger and says that he is using the skill to reveal the monster's weak point and asks her to take this moment to escape. The girl refuses with concern on her face. Mac uses gusts of wind that cut through tree roots. The magician throws the girl away with the wind and tells her to leave. The girl lands and looks towards the group. She turns towards the bushes and sees monsters there. They begin to chase her while the girl runs away. She says she is breathing heavily and thought that she was tired and could not run anymore. One of the crowd of monsters jumps on her. With fear on her face, she apologizes for the fact that they risked their lives for her and she could not even escape. The main character quickly moves next to her, leaving tongues of flame behind him. The girl notices that this is the main character when he stands in front of her. He turns in her direction. Bei Jin asks the girl what happened there and where Commander Tunbo and the others are. The girl asks with surprise on her face how he dealt with three E-rank monsters so easily. The main character turns towards the monster and says how tired he is of them. He presses the girl to him. He tells her to be silent and adds that one more sound and she will throw her to them, and she herself will be to blame. She says that a group of monsters is coming here. Monsters surround them. She wonders if the monsters can't see them when she looks at them. 
With a reddened face, she asks if this is happening because of the main character, and adds that he keeps many secrets. The main character blushed and thinks why she snuggled so close and adds that he is sorry that he is only F rank, and body contact is the only way to hide her aura. Blue-green particles fly through the forest. The main character and Lin Sin hid under a large tree. They sit and Bei Jin says that it is safe here and asks her to tell what happened there in the end. He says that their team included a thief and a D-rank magician and asks if they really couldn't cope with what happened. The girl with surprise on her face asks him how he knows. She asks him with concern on her face how he knows that there were D-rank awakened among the team. The main character answers that he has eyes. He adds that these two did not even hide and revealed their abilities in the battle, but she simply did not notice. The image of Meng Jin appears. He says that an archer must have high insight, and she is also a gold rank archer, but she didn't even notice this. The girls feel ashamed. The girl cries and says that what he says is true, because if she were stronger, she would be useful to the team. The main character asks her if tears will help her in any way and asks her to explain the situation. With tears in her eyes, she cannot tell what happened. The main character looks at her and thought that this whole situation with the moss forest is the same as he expected. The girl invites Bei Jin to quickly go to the camp and tell them everything so that they can send a rescue team. The main character asks if the others will need saving when the squad arrives here and adds that even an awakened E rank can handle this matter, they just need the right approach. He closes his eyes and thought that a team with only two awakened D ranks was doomed to death. The girl says that after Lo Soon was hit, even awakened D ranks were useless and asks how E ranks can deal with this. Dae Jin gets up. He asks the girl to take her so they can figure out what is happening in the moss forest. Cutting wind currents hold back the roots. The monster hits this screen from the wind. The magician uses magic and says that he must endure. Tunbo and the thief are lying on the ground unconscious. The main character and the girl climb a tree and observe the situation. The girl with concern on her face says that the team will soon not be able to continue fighting and asks the main character if he has a plan and if he can save them. With a serious expression on his face, he says that it won't work out, but she can. Lin Zai asks how she will save them. The main character unclenches his fist and tells her to learn to use her gift, because she has inherited the gold rank that her ancestors once had. He looks at her creepily and adds that in all this time she has never even used her skills and asks her if she deserves to have a gold rank. The girl has a glowing mark on her forehead. Bei Jin tells her that if she wants to save them, she needs to learn how to use her powers now. A girl with a dissatisfied expression on her face asks the main character to teach her. He looks at the roots and tells her to use her heart, go deep and watch. The girl's eyes glow brightly. The main character noticed her mark and thought that this golden mark was the skill of a gold rank archer, Eye of the Eagle. He thought that Lin Zai was very capable and if she was under his mentorship, she would be able to achieve S rank even in less than 10 years. The main character closed his eyes and thought about why he was thinking about mentoring again because he had enough of the betrayal of a student from a past life. The girl looks with a piercing gaze and says that she saw Lo Soon's trace. The terrible monster is enveloped in black and red energy. The girl says she sees about 10 black trees or even more. Bei Jin says this is not enough. The girl clenched her teeth and said that she would try. She looked closely at something and said what she saw. She draws attention to the purple glow in the monster's stomach and says that she sees where their energy accumulates. The main character looks down and says that what took Lo Soon is the reason for all the strange things in the forest of moss, and the forest now seems to have merged together. He imagines the image of a large tree monster and says that Lo Soon's body now has the strength of 10 black trees and it will not be so easy to defeat him, but everything will be different if you hit his weak point. The girl pulls the bowstring and replies that she understands and needs to hit the weak spot. He snaps his fingers on her head and tells her not to be smart. She holds her head, and Bei Jin says that she is only an F-rank archer and her fire arrow will not penetrate his defense, but will only attract attention. The girl with a pitiful expression on her face asks to teach her. The guy closes his eyes and says that due to inattention and insufficient skills, they ended up in this situation. He asks if there are other options if you are an archer and cannot break through the target's defense. The girl with enthusiasm on her face says that she understands. She pulls the string with the ice arrow. The arrow shoots straight at the monster. His stomach is covered with a crust of ice. Several more arrows fly at him. His legs are now partially covered in ice as well. The main character swings his sword, using an unpredictable fist blade and engulfing the sword in fire. He says it's his turn now. Lin Zai exclaimed happily that she had succeeded. Blushing slightly, she turned to the main character and said that she did it. Looking down, she said that the ice arrow would not last long. 
Bi Jin jumped from the tree, holding a blade shrouded in flames in his hand. Lin Zai said that at first glance, it seems as if he doesn't care about anyone, but in times of need, he is always willing to lend a helping hand. She said that although he seemed indifferent, he had a good heart. The main character rushed towards the monster, and she exclaimed in surprise that he decided not to save people, but simply kill Lo Soon. Lin Zai shouted that the arrows could only immobilize Lo Soon for a while, but his defense was almost like that of D-rank monsters. The protagonist ran forward, and she shouted that if he couldn't break through his defense, he would be attacked. Bi Jin, landing in front of the enemy, thought that it was true and Lo Soon itself is not that strong, but the armor makes him invulnerable, and such defense is even stronger than that of many D-rank monsters. The protagonist's fist was shrouded in flames, and he thought with a grin that he had taken this into account, and the ice arrows that Lin Zai used were just part of his plan. Rising to his feet, he told the flames to burn him. Using a flaming fist blade, Bi Jin punched Lo Soon at the part of his body covered in ice. He thought that the collision of two elements, fire and water, intensified the blow. He said the fire melted the ice and combined with the water. The flame exploded in the monster's stomach, and the main character ducked down. Lin Zai exclaimed that he was able to break through the defense. She asked how he did it. Something dark purple was visible inside the monster's wooden body, and she asked if it was the dark core. The main character, grabbing the blade shrouded in flames, used the blade of the flaming fist at full power. He delivered several quick and powerful blows to the monster's dark core. He exclaimed that the core was broken. The wooden shell crumbled, revealing Lo Soon's body. With a tired face and bulging veins, he asked where he was. Noticing the main character, he immediately became angry, clutching his stomach and swore at him. Bi Jin raised his face and grinned irritably. He said that knights have an advantage against the forces of evil, and are supposed to be the least likely to be influenced by monsters, but the black trees were able to take advantage of it due to spiritual weakness. Lo soon looked at his hand. Putting his hand on his face, he asked how he knew about it. He said he must have set it all up. Rushing to attack him, he said that they had conspired. Bi Jin frowned and said that he was in fool. He parried his attack with a slight movement, and Lo Soon spun in the air. He fell to the ground, raising a cloud of dust. The purple stone fell out of Lo Soon's clothes. The main character said that he is an ignorant and envious soul for whom no one will even cry. He picked up the purple stone from the ground. Looking at it, he grinned and thought that it was a mid-level astrolite. Bi Jin, shrouded in a blue aura, thought that dark energy without a master was confidently trying to subdue him. Looking around, he thought that the branches and leaves that held them here had dried up, and the aura had also weakened, but his soul was still not at peace. Lin Zai, having descended to the ground, asked the captain if he was okay. Sitting down on the ground next to one of the people, she said that they were so exhausted that they lost consciousness, but they were all alive. Turning to the main character, she thanked him, because if it weren't for him, they would all have died here. Approaching her, the main character said that simple gratitude was not enough for him. Lin Zai asked in confusion what he was talking about. She thought that this was not surprising, because she was the first beauty in the city of Dawn. Bi Jin wondered what was wrong with her. He asked if she remembered what he said during the test. Lin Zai asked if he wanted her to keep everything a secret. The main character nodded and praised her. She thought that she had understood everything wrong. Turning around, Bi Jin told her not to go anywhere because it was safe here now. Lin Zai asked where he was going. Turning around, the main character replied that, of course, he was going deep into the forest to eliminate the source of mutations. Lin Zai repeated his words with wide eyes. The main character, walking among the trees, thought that everything turned out exactly as he expected. Frowning, he thought that the black trees had dried up, and it seemed that Lo Soon's death must have greatly depleted the dark energy reserves but he still didn't know where the source was. A wooden creature peeked out from under his vest. Bi Jin, stroking his head with his finger, said that his time had come. He told him to show him the way to the source of the mutations. The creature pointed a finger to the side. The main character quickly ran in the indicated direction. Approaching a huge tree, he asked if it was there. Looking around, he said there was a strong smell of rot and an ominous aura, and it looked like they were getting close, but there was something else in the air. Green energy shot forward from the wooden creature's finger. Green energy entered the tree trunk. Energy glowed from the roots of the tree. Bi Jin said that the source was hidden in the trunk of a giant tree, and he would never have found it himself. He asked the wooden creature if he had appeared here too. The creature answered with a smile. The main character thought how such a cute end could be born from a place with such a terrible aura. He thought something was wrong here. Walking forward, he thought it was strange, because the entire way he had not felt the presence of a single monster. Noticing something Bi Jin wondered if they had arrived. 
He froze in amazement, clenching his fists. In front of him were many wooden houses with fences and stairs, and he said that it was usually a very unusual abandoned village. Walking past the houses, he said that this village was very different from those that people build. The main character asked if this is exactly the source of the mutation, because it is full of vital energy and does not have any ghosts of erosion. He noticed something that looked like a reddish mist. Raising two fingers up, he used boundless gong kai. Circles of blue energy surrounded the tree. Looking at the mist of dark energy, he thought that he could not do anything against such strong energy. Frowning, Bi Jin thought that he needed to become stronger, and if he had an E rank, he could still try to get involved in this fight. But with his current level, it would be too reckless. Looking at the astrolite in his hand, he thought that he had very little left to raise his rank, and this astrolite must be enough but it concentrated a large amount of dark energy, which is difficult to absorb at once. The wooden creature climbed higher up his clothes, worried. It pointed to the side and the main character asked if he wanted them to go there. It said something quietly in his ear. Bijin, after a short silence, agreed to go and have a look. They approached a wooden fence, next to which stood a small withered tree. The main character said that he was born here. The wooden creature released green energy upon touching the wood. Looking at the balls with images around, Bijin said that these were the memories of the ants. In the first memory, birds fluttered around a tree on which a small wooden house was built. In the next one there were many ants, cheerfully talking about something. The main character said that this means that this village was built by ants. In the next memory, the ant was pouring water from a bucket onto a tree standing next to the fence. Suddenly the balloons with memories burst. The main character looked slightly sad at the crumbling memories. The little ant, gesturing with his hands, said something. Bijin knelt down next to him and asked if he wanted him to help him find out what happened to the villagers. Ant folded his palms in a pleading gesture. The main character agreed, but said that clearly no one had lived in this place for a very long time, so it was better for him not to count on much. The sad ant climbed onto his shoulder. Jumping over the lock, Bijin said that he hoped they were able to escape when the monsters attacked. Noticing something, he turned sharply. In front of him were many dead ants lying on the ground. The little ant wept bitterly. The main character, covering his face with his hand, told him not to look. He said this is the real world. The wind carried leaves that had fallen from the trees through the air. They stood among the makeshift graves in which they had buried the ants. Bijin thought that it would be a while before he calmed down, because after all, he was still a child. Turning around, he thought that he would go on alone. Ant, gritting his teeth, jumped onto his shoulder. The main character asked if he wanted to go with him. Looking at him, he asked if he wanted to avenge his relatives. Patting him on the head, he said that, although he was still very small, he had already understood that good must be repaid with good, and evil with evil. He suggested looking around. Approaching an arch shrouded in a dark aura, Bi Jin said that it looks like it's here. Using his accumulation of strength, he rushed through the arch, shrouded in a blue aura. He thought the disguise was working and they entered undetected. As he walked among the dead trees, he thought that the dark energy had taken the form of a fog, and it was so dense that it could well be the reason for the mutation of high-level monsters. He wondered why he could only sense he and D-rank auras. Walking among the graves, the main character decided to go deeper and see what was there. He saw two dark ants glowing with blue energy instead of green. The main character frowned and a drop of sweat ran down his face. He thought that the trunks of the black trees intertwined and formed an altar, and the dark power collected in it spread throughout the entire forest of moss. Bijin thought that in the center was the body of a giant ebony tree. He wondered if this was where all the dark, mutated energy of this forest came from. Noticing a creature with a staff, he wondered if it was a priest. Frowning, the protagonist asked what he was doing and if he was trying to absorb the power of the giant ebony tree. Raising his staff, the priest said that a sacrifice was needed to complete it. He said that by draining the power of this ent, he would become king of the forest. The little ent, shrouded in a green aura, opened his eyes in fear. The priest looked fearfully at the huge ent sitting behind him. Surrounded by purple energy, he shouted that there was an outsider there. Pointing at the main character with his staff, he said that he sees him. Bijin, dispelling his blue aura, said that he had been discovered. He said that it looked like he could forget about the undercover fight. The priest said that the people who killed his subordinates and the forest spirits who interfered with the sacrifices should be expelled. He ordered the guards to destroy the violators. Many dark ants rushed to attack. Grabbing the blade in his hand, Bijin said that he needed to act quickly. Holding a dagger shrouded in flames in his hand, he cut off the head of one of the ants. He dealt many quick blows with his blade, setting the ants on fire. He thought that there were too many black trees here and he would not be able to last long. The main character looked at the priest with the staff in his hand. 
rushing towards him. He said that if he wanted to kill the monster, he needed to cut off its head. Holding the flaming blade in his hand, he thought that after accumulating strength, he could release a lot of energy and move faster than usual. And this priest is a magician, which means that if you get close to him, it will be very easy to kill him. Gripping the hilt of the blade tighter, he thought that he needed to get closer. Bijin opened his eyes in amazement. The priest swung his staff, grasping it with both hands. He struck the ground with his staff and it sparkled with purple energy. The main character jumped back and said that his physical strength was developed like that of ordinary warriors, and if he had not dodged, he would have been seriously injured at best, and dead at worst. Lifting the debris into the air with magic, the priest told him to prepare to die. Sweat ran down the protagonist's face. He exclaimed that it was a monster with two classes, warrior and priest. The priest said that now he will see what the king of the moss forest is capable of. Yi Jin grinned and said that this was nonsense. The priest, rushing to attack him, asked how he dared speak to the king like that. He said he would make a bloody mess out of him. Grabbing the astrolite with his hand, the main character thought that he was thinking not to use it, but now he has no choice. Squeezing the stone in his palm, he broke it into fragments. The priest almost hit him on the head with his staff, and Yi Jin asked whether such a stupid monster could call himself a king. The protagonist's spiritual power rose to 410, raising his rank to level E. His eyes glowed yellow. An explosion occurred in the tree altar. The explosion raised a cloud of dust and scattered stone debris. The priest was thrown aside. The main character, standing in a cloud of dust, said that the difference between E and F ranks is simply incredible. He frowned, looking at the priest who was still standing. Bi Jin said that the flaming fist blade was still not enough to defeat this priest. The priest lifted his head up and was enveloped in strong violet energy. The main character asked if he had become angry. He said that the less control he had over himself, the easier it would be for him to find his weaknesses. The priest instantly closed the distance and swung his staff at him. He struck the ground with his staff, scattering stone fragments. Bi Jin jumped back and said that it was close and he became much faster. The priest struck again with his staff, and the main character dodged, spinning the blade in his hand. The main character used a triple strike with a flaming fist blade. Jumping back, he thought that his defense was too strong, and there was no way he could break through it. The priest looked at him, holding a sphere of dark energy above his hand. The main character frowned, and the priest said that he was caught. He threw dark energy at him, raising a cloud of dust. Li Jin fell to the ground, enveloped in purple energy. The priest told him that he would not be able to survive a direct hit from the dark energy. He opened his eyes in amazement. The protagonist activated the knight's physique, the protection of the Holy Spirit, and said that fortunately the knight's physique was able to protect him. He said that he would not have been able to withstand such strong dark energy without the protection of the Holy Spirit. A magic circle with symbols of all classes appeared behind him, and Bi Jin said with a grin that he almost succeeded. The priest, charging furiously, said that he should have died. The main character, dodging his attacks, thought that his attacks were now just a trifle for him. But this guy has too thick armor, and he cannot inflict any damage on him at all. Squeezing the blade in his hand, he said that this weapon was given to the boy by his parents when he was 12 years old, and it is only rank F so he cannot hurt him. Bi Jin landed on the ground. Enveloped in blue energy, he said that he could use ice to make it stronger. The blade in his hand became icy. The main character stood with a fist shrouded in flames and a dagger shrouded in icy energy. The priest rushed to attack, striking quickly with his staff. The main character dodged another attack by jumping behind him. Part of the priest's neck was covered with ice. Bi Jin made several quick strikes with his blade. Smirking, he swung his fist, engulfed in flames. Hitting the priest on the neck with his fist, the main character said that now it was his turn. The priest's neck exploded, scattering shards of ice. The priest looked fearfully at his smoking neck. The main character approached him, twirling the blade in his hand. Taking a fighting stance, he said that it was all over. Swinging his blade, he struck the priest. The priest asked if he wanted to kill him. Violet energy burst out of the ground and rushed towards the huge tree. It cut off the roots that held the ant. The priest shouted to him to wake up. Ant raised his head and let out a roar. He began to slowly rise, and the priest said that they would die together. The protagonist asked if this giant tree was a D-rank monster. Looking at the violet energy surrounding him, he said that it seemed as if the evil forces of the entire moss forest were concentrated in him. The monster, straightened up, stood menacingly in front of him. Bi Jin, sweating nervously, said that this time he was in big trouble. Those who have the heart of a brave man bravely break through difficulties. In a desperate situation, he can ignite the spirit and blood, increasing his power ten times. Lin Zai, sitting on the ground next to the people covered with blankets, heard a buzzing sound. 
A voice from the object in her hand told her to wait a little longer because they would be coming soon. Lin Zai told them to hurry up because they needed medical attention. All that was now heard from the object was the noise of interference. She exclaimed in amazement that the connection had been interrupted. Noticing something, she fell to the ground and looked up. A huge stream of red energy rushed into the sky from the forest, and she said that there was a strong dark energy coming from the depths of the forest. Lin Zai exclaimed that Bi Jin had gone that way. A huge ant, shrouded in red energy, slowly walked forward. The main character stood surrounded by streams of wind. He thought that this giant still had a D rank, but all the energy of the moss forest flowed towards him, and it seemed to never end. He thought that he needed to kill him with one blow, because if they had an endurance battle, he would definitely lose. Mythical talent, the heart of a brave man, its owner bravely breaks through difficulties. In a desperate situation, he can ignite the spirit and blood, increasing his power tenfold. The main character thought that he was a little exhausted after the last blow, but there was no choice, and he would have to try. Noticing that the ant has raised its hands in the air, it will wonder if it is attacking. Shrouded in a fiery aura, Bi Jin thought about the heart of a brave man. The priest laughed evilly. The main character frowned decisively. Seeing something, he opened his mouth in amazement. A huge root hit the priest on the back. The priest was thrown aside, raising a cloud of dust. A slight groan was heard from the cloud of dust. The priest, raising his head with difficulty, asked why he attacked his relative, because he had to kill that man. The huge roots hit the ground with force again. The main character asked how this is possible. The roots rose above the crater in which the torn priest lay. Red energy enveloped the huge ant. The energy rose upward, and there were many dark ants around the altar. The roots began to pierce the dark ants one by one. Bijin said that he is even stronger than he thought. The huge ant stepped forward. The main character, shrouded in a fiery aura, thought that he was coming. Looking at him, he thought that now the real battle was beginning. The little ant jumped on his head, spreading his arms to the sides. His eyes, full of determination, glowed green. Huge roots slowly rose above the ground. The main character spoke about strength ten times greater than normal. He looked up in amazement. Huge roots pierced the torso of the huge treant, and Bi Jin exclaimed that he had attacked himself. Violet energy along with green particles came out of the body of the huge ant. Spheres containing memories rose into the air. The main character asked how such pure energy ended up in such a monster. He and the little ant looked at the memories from the spheres. The ants in the village were enveloped in purple energy, clutching their heads in agony. The priest, surrounded by dark ants, demanded that he give them his shrine. He told them to join the forces of darkness, and then they would spare them. Ants armed with spears fought with dark ants. One of the ants, approaching the tree, told him that he was the most important member of their clan, and he hoped that the shrine would protect him so that he could survive the attack. An ant, shrouded in violet energy, pierced another ant with a spear. Bijin, frowning, thought that it turns out that the little ant survived because he was hidden in a tree. The little ant began to cry heavily. The spirit of one of the ants, stroking his head, told him not to cry and to live a good life. Smiling, he told the protagonist that he hoped he would be kind to this child. The main character bowed politely. Straightening up, he said that although they were not human, he admired their courage and he would take care of him. The spirit of the ant disappeared into the air. A small wooden post stuck out of the ground, covered in roots. The main character and the little ant stood in front of a small grave. The dark energy around the tree was no longer there, and it glowed with blue energy. Bijin said that now he understands why the source of mutations appeared here. Going down to the priest's corpse, he said that he could remove a couple of useful things from him. The main character said with satisfaction that the helmet, wrist armor and breastplate could still be used. He said the bark was still usable and he didn't need the staff, but he could sell it on the black market. Sweating nervously, he asked how he could carry it all away. He noticed a dim green glow on the priest's body. Picking up the object from him, he said that he had a spatial pocket in his headband. Having emptied the contents of his pocket, Bi Jin said that there was a thief's dagger and more than 10 mid-level astrolites. He said that he had just raised his rank and had already received so many promotion materials. Smiling, he said that the greatest treasure is the spatial pocket itself. The main character thought that there were few C rank awakened who could boast of such an artifact, and it was strange that a monster below D rank had it. He said the bandage was pretty ugly and he would redo it when he had time. Bi Jin asked the little ant if he said goodbye to his family. And nodded. He jumped onto the main character's shoulder and he smiled. Patting him on the head, Bi Jin said that he is very strong and now he will live with him. He told him not to worry because he would teach him everything he knew. The wind swayed the leaves on a huge tree. The voice from the Lin Zai item said that an unknown mutation with a danger level of D or higher had been spotted deep in the moss forest. 
he told her to try to hide her presence because they were getting close. Lin Zai, looking deep into the forest, was worried about the main character because he still had not returned. Blue energy quickly flashed between the trees. Lin Zai exclaimed joyfully that Bi Jin was alive. Blushing with embarrassment, she said that rescuers had reported that a terrible mutation had occurred in the depths of the moss forest. She asked if he was okay. The main character, frowning, asked that they would arrive soon. Having dropped to the ground, he asked her not to forget what she had promised him. He lay down next to the other people who had lost consciousness. Lin Zai said that he wanted to deceive them by pretending that he had lost consciousness. Several people were rapidly approaching her from the forest. Lin Zai thanked Zai Gong, who came out of the forest. Zai Gong said that the main thing is that she is fine. He said a rescue team would help her return home. He said that they would go deep into the forest because they needed to find out the root cause of this mutation. His squad quickly disappeared among the trees. Lin Zai watched them leave, sweating nervously. Suburb, Camp of the Awakened. The main character, standing in the hospital room, turned around and said that he was leaving. Lin Zai asked him to wait. Bi Jin turned around and told her to tell her boss to send the research reward to him personally. He closed the door behind him, and she put her hands on her hips in displeasure. A voice from the object asked her if she had met any other awakened ones in the forest. Lin Zai smiled awkwardly and said no. Zai Gong said that someone had already eliminated the source of the mutations, and he thought that it had to be at least a D-rank awakened team, and maybe even a C-rank. Lin Zai thought that Bi Jin couldn't do it alone, after all he just recently became awakened. City of Dawn, Region of the Awakened the main character, walking down the street, thought that although he was lucky to get a lot of mid-level astrolytes, he still had no other resources. Looking around, he thought that this time he was very lucky, and fortunately, he was able to use his abilities wisely. Clenching his hand into a fist, he thought that he should master other skills as quickly as possible. But getting them is not so easy, he needs to think about what to do next. And looked out of his clothes, asking for food with a pitiful face. Bi Jin patted him on the head and said that he would feed him as soon as they returned home. He wondered if he was even eating. He noticed people unloading furniture from a truck. The main character saw Song, a manager from the awakened community, who was commanding the workers. Frowning, he thought that after Fan Bin's death Song, he became the owner of the Bi family mansion, and it seemed like they were bringing in new furniture. Noticing Bi Jin, Song said that he just wanted to talk to him. Laughing, he said that he never imagined that the B family's mansion would be so good. With a tight smile, the main character said that then he should enjoy every second spent in this house. Smirking, he thought that no one had dared to act so arrogantly in his presence for many years, and Song might as well have his fun while he still could. Standing on a street full of neon signs and tall buildings, the protagonist asked if this was the Dawn City Black Market. Walking down the street, he decided to first evaluate the items he received and then buy something for himself. The ant emerged from his clothes again, and Bi Jin asked what happened. Ant turned away from the burger in his hands in disgust. The main character asked if he wanted to say that he doesn't like this kind of food. Ant nodded, throwing his burger away. Bi Jin said that he doesn't seem to like human food. Looking at the Zhangbao Pavilion, he thought maybe there would be food for the little ant. Seeing the huge number of people inside, Bi Jin asked how long he would have to wait in line. He said the assessment was, as always, very popular. Turning around, he walked in the other direction. The main character said that there is no one here. He asked if this was something new. He said that the way low-ranking items are assessed is almost the same, so in general there is no difference where to go. People in the crowd, looking at him, said that some pervert had decided to enter that point. They said that even with such strict rules, there are still people who decide to visit her. Someone said that some desires can lead to the grave, although he would also like to go there, even if he gets a couple of blows. Someone else laughed and suggested we see what would happen to him. The main character saw a note on the door. Before entering, no, if you cannot unravel the spiritual scheme, then you will have to take a triple blow from our guard. He slowly opened the door. He saw in front of him a large man in a cape. Bi Jin thought in amazement that there was a C-rank awakened working as a guard at the assessment center. The man said with a grin that another one wanted to get acquainted with his fist. He told him that since he was here, he should have read the rules of this store. He said that if he could figure out the spiritual pattern, they would evaluate him for free. Slamming his fist into his palm, the man said that if he couldn't handle it, he would beat him. The main character looked thoughtfully at the spiritual diagram. The man told him that he could go from here if he regretted coming here, and then he would use the triple kick. Bi Jin said that the owner of this place is not a mistake, and he cannot stand up for himself, so he hired himself a dog to guard him. The man grabbed him by the collar and asked what he was saying. 
He asked how dare he talk about the owner like that and whether he wanted to die. A girl with yellow hair was sitting at a table behind a screen. The main character said that this is a very rare scheme that can help especially gifted magicians prevent troubles from arising in their spiritual power when raising their rank. However, there are some features in its lines that are difficult to understand. He said that it seemed that the person who gave such a task was too weak to handle it on his own. Pushing the guard's hand away, he said that solving this scheme cost much more than appraising his weapon. Li Jin asked if they decided to look for a fool because they just don't want to pay. The guard angrily asked how he dared insult his master. He said that he would now teach him politeness. The protagonist with a grin told him to ask the owner, when he absorbs the light of the stargate to cultivate himself, does his body pulsate in pain? Does spiritual energy burst out of him? He said that this is a sign that he will die soon, so he should start looking for a new owner. The guard raised his fist and told him to watch his language. The girl ordered him to stop. The security guard named Zhu Ta turned around worriedly. The girl extended her hand and said that if he could solve this spiritual scheme, she would be very grateful. Zhu Ta asked her if he was telling the truth. The main character asked if this was a request. Turning around, he said that like the dog, like the owner. He told them to humble themselves and wait for death. Zhu Ta blocked his way and said that he couldn't just leave. He frowned in astonishment. Behind the main character was an image of his past incarnation and he asked if he was sure that he wanted to fight. Zhu Ta wondered why this guy had such a terrifying aura. He wondered how his aura could be so powerful, since he clearly had an E-rank. Zhu Ta bowed, apologized for his inappropriate behavior and asked to help his mistress. Li Jin, passing by him, said that if everything could be solved with an apology, then the world would not kill out of revenge and resentment. Opening the door, he left the room. Zhu Ta gritted his teeth in irritation. He somersaulted after the main character. He knelt in front of him, and people in the crowd asked if it was a guard from the assessment center. Someone exclaimed that he beat and threw out everyone who dared to come to them, and now he is rolling out of there himself. Zhu Ta, hitting his head on the floor, said that he was wrong. He asked for forgiveness again. People in the crowd exclaimed in amazement that he was actually apologizing to someone on his knees. The main character looked at him silently. A girl with blonde hair, removing the hood from her head, asked to forgive her and her subordinate for their rudeness. Bowing, she asked to accept their sincere apologies. Li Jin looked at her in slight amazement. He remembered the identical-looking girl clapping her fists while standing next to the dead monsters and saying that the next time he came to her town, she would give him a warm welcome. The main character responded in kind. Bi Jin thought it brought back memories and she was his ally when he was in a rank awakened. He wondered if this girl could be her descendant. He asked her name. The girl, bowing slightly, said that her name was Zhu Yin and if he could cure and rid her of the problem, she would be very grateful to him. The main character thought with a smile that her surname was Zhu. He said that he would help, but payment must be made in advance. He asked him to identify these items and then the items on the list. Zhu Ta, sitting at the table opposite her, said that this guy was young and did not look like an awakened magician. He asked if she was sure that he could cure her. He said he could be an assassin sent by the family to kill her, or just a deceiver. Zhu Yin said that her body problem was a secret known only to her, and this person discovered it at first sight and spoke in such detail as if he had seen it with his own eyes. She said he must be an extraordinary person. Zhu Ta wanted to object, getting up from his seat. Zhu Yin, calling him by name, sternly said that he should know the position of their faction in the family. She asked if he could imagine what the consequences would be once people from the other branch became aware of her illness. She said that she had no other choice and should take any chance that could cure her. Zhu Ta left the room. The main character, sitting opposite Zhu Yin, suggested not to hesitate and start. The girl took off her cape, exposing her shoulders. She asked embarrassedly if this is fine. A magic circle was visible on her chest. Bi Jin's eyes glowed blue. There are various types of spiritual force formations, both for combat and auxiliary functions. Mages have weak bodies, and in order to advance further, they often need to be assisted with special spiritual force formations to make the rampant flow of spiritual force function. The main character, frowning, said that her body had ancient patterns. Zhu Yin opened her mouth in amazement. She asked what kind of disease it was. Bi Jin asked if she knew. He said that the spirit pattern inscription body is a kind of gold rank awakened talent. But such talents are not awakened at the very beginning, and only after reaching D rank there is little chance of obtaining them. Zhu Yin asked about the gold rank talent in shock. 
she asked that her illness was actually a sign of the transformation of the body of the ancient patterns. The main character said that this talent is extremely rare and, as a rule, is inherited from ancestors. He said that among her ancestors there must have been a great magician with a gold rank talent. Pursing his lips, Bi Jin thought, although the body of rare patterns is rare, but how, as her descendant, could she not have heard of it? Zhu Yin said that her aunt and grandmother were great magicians when they were alive but they had long been seriously injured and died during a battle with a terrible monster, and much had not been made public. The main character was upset and thought that she had died after all. Closing his eyes, he said that there was no point in chasing after the dead. Raising his palm, he said that now he would teach her the technique of working with spiritual power, triple realization spiritual breathing, and she would quickly learn. He told her to strive to complete the spiritual pattern body transformation as soon as possible and then all the ailments in her body would heal naturally. The protagonist thought that the triple realization spiritual breath was her secret skill, and now he can pass it on to the next generation of her family. Zhu Yin, on all fours, thanked him. Zhu Ta stood nervously behind the door, from behind which came groans and heavy breathing. Zhu Yin sat with her eyes closed, nervously sweating and breathing heavily. The protagonist thought that her understanding had increased markedly compared to what it was at the beginning and it took her almost an hour to somehow adjust to the spiritual breath of triple realization. A small sphere of energy flew out from the magic circle on Zhu Yin's chest. Looking at the sphere of energy, the main character exclaimed. He thought that her spiritual power began to overflow while transforming her body into the inscriptions of spiritual patterns. After swallowing the energy sphere, he thought that it was a useful thing, so he would not waste it. Bi Jin activated the cleaning. The stone in his hand crumbled like sand, and he thought in amazement that he had used up a mid-rank astrolite so quickly. Looking at his palm with a smile, the protagonist thought that it seemed that the overflowing pure spiritual power that came out of it had increased his absorption rate tenfold. He thought it was like receiving a sudden reward. Bi Jin said that in this case, he will not hesitate and will absorb all the astrolites that he has and advance to the awakened rank D closing his eyes. He said, absorb them, boundless Kai Gong. He thought that he could solve all the current problems if he was strong enough. Suddenly the energy left a cut on his cheek. The main character, looking at his hand, covered with cuts, thought, he forgot how weak his body is now, and it is not able to withstand such a flow of energy. Touching his temple, he asked if his body would burst if this continued. Surrounded by blue energy, he looked forward. Zhu Yin meditated serenely, surrounded by smooth streams of yellow energy. Blushing slightly, Bi Jin said that there was no other choice and he would have to take extreme measures. Orange energy surrounded the main character. Raising two fingers up and gritting his teeth, he activated the limitless Kai Gong. By moving his hands, he activated the energy transformation of the spiritual threads. The main character said, intertwining spiritual threads, constructing an array. A large magic circle appeared in front of him and he said, spiritual power array, flame body. He closed his eyes tightly, making a painful grimace. Energy entered his chest and Bi Jin exclaimed happily that he had succeeded. He said that according to the body method of tracing spiritual patterns, this power will be converted into an array of spiritual power and imprinted on the body. He said that by doing this, he would firstly avoid his own body exploding, and secondly, he would be able to summon energy from the spiritual power array at any time. And all of this could be considered as an imitation version of the spiritual pattern inscription's body. Sighing, the main character thought that this would be a lesson for him, and it seems that he has not yet fully adapted to his current state mentally. He thought that he needed to firmly remember that if he made such a mistake in battle, he would simply become a dead man. Jin Yin opened her eyes and slowly exhaled. She said with a smile that the chaotic spiritual power array had completely recovered, and the spiritual power in her body had increased greatly, and she had become a C-rank awakened. Rushing towards the main character in a grateful hug, she pinned him to the floor. Bai Jin asked what kind of shamelessness this is. He told her to get dressed. Zhu Ta opened his mouth in shock. He fell to his knees. Bowing before the main character, he thanked him for curing her. He said that he was suspicious of his method all along and he has beads for eyes. He asked to be punished. Bijou thought that Zhu Ta was very loyal to her. Raising his palm, he told him to come forward because the treatment was not free. He asked what about his reward. Placing the box on the table, Zhu Ta said that everything on his list was here and the dagger was also identified. The main character thought that he even equipped the tools to repair the armor. On the red pillow lay a black branch feng, bronze rank. Bijin thought that it was better to use a bronze rank dagger than nothing at all. Taking the dagger in his hand, he thought he was feeling nostalgic. 
he thought that he used to have epic rank divine equipment. The main character collected the items in a spatial pocket. Zhu Tao and Zhu Yin looked at him in amazement and thought that even B rank awakened ones did not have spatial treasures. B Jin asked what happened to them. Zhu Tao raised his palms and said nothing. He thought B Jin was a great person. He entered from their room, and they bowed after him. People in the crowd asked in amazement what happened there. They said he was accompanied by a beauty from the appraisal department. The guy in the black shirt said that his goddess would not fall in love with such a handsome guy. He said that he was not at all jealous of his handsome face. The main character went outside and thought that the harvest was good, but it seemed that he had forgotten something. Remembering the food for the ant, he slapped himself on the head. His spatial pocket began to glow green. Bi Jin asked the ant why he went into his inner pocket. The ant, who was drinking green liquid from thin glass bottles, turned around. The main character thought in horror that he had just received these potions of spiritual power. City of Dawn, Reception of the Warrior's Guild Bi Jin thought that he did not expect that spiritual potions were suitable as food for ants. He thought that their price was too high for him now, and he needed to be fed with something. And he was a real ruiner. He grinned and said that he couldn't wait to see what kind of food he would grow up to be. And now it was important to complete more tasks to get more rewards. Duan Jia told the main character that he was just in time and the meeting for the exchange of talented awakened ones, together with the warrior guild and the knight guild, was now beginning. He said that he left a place for him. Bi Jin turned away and said that he was not interested. He thought that this was just a meeting for the exchange of experience among newcomers, and that this kind of thing did not interest him. He thought that, moreover, the reward in such a meeting would be very small. Duan Jia showed a piece of paper closer. The main character saw that the prize was 1 million and 10 boxes of spiritual power potions. He opened his eyes in amazement. Taking the piece of paper from him, he said that it would live up to his expectations and would definitely take first place at this experience exchange meeting. He asked that he needed to improve the reputation of the Warriors Guild. Duan Jia smiled awkwardly and said that he had just become awakened, so he didn't have any special expectations for him. He said that the current members were elites with two and three years of combat experience, and he only gave him this opportunity so that he could meet and interact with the geniuses and gain combat experience. Bi Jin, looking at the paper, said, he knows. Duan Jia, with his hands on his hips, said to be careful not to get hurt or expose yourself to ridicule. Someone asked if Bi Jin was that guy. Song said that it was true, and according to the information they received, Lo Soon was in the same squad with him before he died and they were in conflict. The guy with green hair said that it looked more like the fatal wound on his corpse was caused by a weapon rather than a monster, and in any case, this guy is now under suspicion. The man with the sword, sitting on the sofa, said that he killed his brother, which means he will take his life. They said with a grin that it seemed like Bi Jin was destined to die. City of Dawn, Arena for the Awakened A meeting to exchange experience between awakened guilds. According to the rules, only awakened people under 20 years of age who have proven themselves well are allowed to participate. Moreover, all of these awakened ones are above silver rank. The main character, looking around, thought that although the City of Dawn was not large in scale, the built arena looked majestic. Someone in the crowd asked if it was Bi Jin who had achieved gold rank. Another guy asked if he underestimated them since he came to the meeting right after he became awakened. Another guy said that he would crush this rookie genius as soon as he got the chance. The man, with his arms outstretched, said that almost all the staff were here and the exchange meeting had officially begun. He said that members of the warrior and knight guilds would compete on a first-come, first-serve basis for the bracelets. Lin Zai noticed the main character. Zai Gong asked if this was not Bi Jin. Looking at Lin Zai, he said that he had just become awakened and had already come here. He asked if he was not at all afraid that he would be beaten. He said that he was right, and this guy's luck had completely turned away, because, having entered the site, he had already doomed himself to be beaten. The guy standing opposite the main character, clapping his fists, said that he was lucky and the first opponent was a newcomer like him. Bai Pei, an E-rank knight, took a fighting stance and said with a grin that it was time for him to feel the full cruelty of the elite in this meeting. The protagonist quickly hit him in the face with a fist shrouded in yellow energy. Frowning, he said that he talked too much for a small fish. Bai Pei flew to the side, spinning several times in the air. Rising to his feet with difficulty, he said that he was in pain. The audience looked at the stage in amazement. Bai Pei, frowning, asked if he thought that he would be unprepared for a surprise attack. He said that he would knock out all his teeth. The main character thought that a newcomer like him could only make excuses. Looking at the audience, he noticed a murderous aura, and from two people, 
placing two fingers to his temple. He thought that the murderous aura of one of them seemed familiar, and it was Song, sweating nervously. He thought that the aura emanating from the other person was somehow strange and very strong and he did not know who it was. Bai Pei charged and shouted that he would show him the strength of an E-rank knight. Using a lightsaber strike, he slashed with the sword. Li Jin raised his flaming fist and told him to get out of here. He blocked the attack with his fist. People in the crowd exclaimed in amazement that he did not even use a weapon, but fought with a knight with a wide sword with his fists. The main character's fist knocked Bai Pei back. Falling to the ground, Bai Pei exclaimed why his fists were so strong. The host declared victory for Bi Jin and the Warrior Guild. People in the crowd laughed and said that he defeated the Sword Knight using only his fists, even though Bi Jin had recently awakened and he was truly a genius. Lin Zai thought with a smile that he was as cool as before. Zai Gong said that this means that his golden talent is something like body enhancement. He said that during the fight, he punched directly on the side of the sword and used physical strength, winning with one blow, and this is a terrifying fighting talent. Turning to Lin Zai, he said that she became awakened at the same time as Bi Jin, and they both awakened golden talents. He said she had better tense up to keep up with him. Lin Zai agreed with an awkward smile and thought that even if she left him behind, she would be content just to see his back. The hooded man exclaimed that he had defeated an E-rank knight with one blow, meaning that he was indeed his brother's killer. He said that he would show him more. The main character and his new opponent bowed to each other. Bi Jin struck again with his flaming fist. Another enemy, dressed in golden armor, rushed to attack him. The main character dodged with a grin, and the guy in armor fell down the steps. Someone in the crowd said to look at his arrogant look. He asked if he didn't beat all his opponents simply by his golden talent, which strengthened his body. Another person said that if he had such talent, he would stand out better than Bi Jin. The main character stood with his hands in his pockets. Someone else said he was just lucky to get the golden talent. Turning to them, Bi Jin said that they shouldn't talk about someone behind his back, and they should think about what they were doing in the Starlight Gift Lands. He asked why they didn't choose a gold rank talent themselves, and whether it was really a matter of luck. He thought with a grin that everyone here seemed to think that his talent lay in strengthening his body, and this was the effect he expected. The presenter told the participants to get ready. He announced a battle between Bi Jin from the Warriors Guild and Lo Wai from the Knights Guild. Rising to the arena, the main character thought about Lo Wai from the Guild of Knights. The host said that the genius of the Knights Guild, Lo Wai, was closely following the fights. Someone said that he heard that his brother Lo Soon was also an E-rank knight with a bright future, and these brothers are quite famous. Lo Wai took off his hooded cloak, revealing his steel armor. Someone said that he was poorly informed, because Lo Soon died during the sortie, and even if he were alive, that would be the end of it. He said that the ability to advance to rank E was entirely dependent on the cultivation resources received that the younger brother had requested from the Knight's Guild. Lo Wai furrowed his eyebrows angrily and decisively. The guy shouted at him to teach this arrogant newcomer a lesson and make him pick up his teeth from the floor. Someone laughed and said that Bi Jin's luck had come to an end. Sai Gong said that Lo Wai is a genius nurtured by the Knight's Guild, and it looks like the guy's winning streak will end there because Lo Wai is not that simple. The main character thought it was Lo Soon's younger brother and gave off a murderous aura. Lo Wai asked him if he knew his older brother, who was a knight from the Awakened team he had recently joined. Di Jin, scratching his temple, said that he doesn't remember this. Raising his index finger, he said he remembered. He asked if he was talking about the fool who was corrupted and controlled by the monster and then torn apart. Lo Wai angrily asked how dare he insult his brother. The energy enveloped him and he said that he would not let go. The people in the crowd exclaimed that this is a very powerful Holy Radiance Knight, and its strength surpasses that of an ordinary E-Rank Knight. Zygong said that his spiritual power had reached the peak of E-Rank, and most likely, in less than two months, he would be able to break into the ranks of D-Rank Knights. He said that this was amazing, and Bi Jin would definitely lose. Lin Zai frowned and thought that Bi Jin was not so simple either. Song, adjusting his glasses, thought that it seemed like Lo Wai could get rid of the hidden danger in Bi Jin and he could rest easy. Lo Wai, rushing to attack, shouted that he would cut him into pieces. While making quick attacks with his spear, he used a holy spear combo. The guy said that it was a holy spear combo, and the power of the Lo Wai weapon began to stretch out like a wave. He said that it was obvious that he had reached a certain level of skill since he was a talented awakened class knight. Another guy agreed with him and said that it was very difficult to master E-rank skills, let alone achieve such level of mastery. The main character said with a grin that his spear's strength looked good. He swung his sword forward, 
Bi Jin began to block the spear's attacks with his sword, touching the tips of the blades. Some would ask how this is possible, since he repels all the attacks of the spear with his sword. Zai Gong exclaimed that he was able to block every attack. He asked if he was really a newly awakened newcomer, since his vision was so accurate. Lin Zai covered her face in admiration and thought that Bi Jin was as gorgeous as she expected. The protagonist shouted that he had opened and pushed the enemy back with a swing of his sword. Gritting his teeth, Lo Wai thought that his sword was strong. Bi Jin asked if he liked his sword. Lo Wai, cursing, pointed his finger at him and asked how he managed to become so strong, since he had just recently awakened. Frowning, he said that he would kill him anyway. He ate a C-grade explosive spiritual essence pill. He snapped his jaws shut and his eyes began to glow white. Powerful yellow energy enveloped him and he took a fighting stance. Energy swirled around the arena. Sai Gong, jumping up from his seat, exclaimed that this was bad, because Lo Wai had swallowed a forbidden drug, and his strength had gone beyond the limit. Reaching rank D he said that Bi Jin was in danger, and he must prepare to save him, otherwise Du and Jia will then blame him for his death. There was an angry yellow energy dragon behind Lo Wai, and he shouted that he would kill it. The guy, covering himself with his fist, exclaimed that Lo Wai had a very powerful spear. The main character, bending down, asked with a grin if he could. Zai Gong shouted at him to dodge because he wouldn't last. Lin Zai shouted at him to be careful. Song said with an ominous smile that his death was a foregone conclusion. Bi Jin raised his sword and was surrounded by orange energy. The sword in his hand began to show cracks. The protagonist's sword broke into fragments, and the enemy's spear reached his body. Lo Wai with a crazy smile asked if he succeeded and if he killed him with one blow of the spear. Laughing, he said that he had won and avenged his brother. The energy dissipated and the main character stood in front of him unharmed. Lo Wai exclaimed in amazement that he could not move his spear. In front of the main character's chest was a yellow magic circle with an image of a shield. Frowning, Bi Jin asked him if he thought he didn't know about his little tricks. He said that he noticed his explosive spiritual essence as soon as he stepped onto the site. Burning with energy, Lo Wai asked how he knew. Opening his mouth in shock, he exclaimed that his knight's spear seemed to be stuck to his hand. The main character said that it was his turn. He thought about how he could use his spear to completely refine the spiritual power array. The energy enveloped the spear and Lo Wai screamed in fear. Bi Jin raised two fingers and used Boundless Kai Gong, Spiritual Transformation, and Spiritual Power Absorption, Summoning. Spectators asked, looking at the arena, what was happening there. Someone exclaimed that Bi Jin was breaking through in battle under such pressure. The main character began to strike quickly with his fists, shrouded in energy. Lo Wai was thrown far into the air. When he hit the wall, he left a dent in it. The host announced that Lo Wai had dropped out. Song thought in shock how this was possible. Someone said that he didn't even have the strength to fight any longer. The main character told the judge that it was time to make an announcement. Someone in the audience told him that he had overdone it. Bi Jin apologized and said that he didn't think he would be so useless even after taking the forbidden drug. Besides, he had a breakthrough in his strength during the fight and would not be able to control it for a while. Laughing, he said that next time he would be more careful. The judge wondered if he hadn't just recently awakened, and if this was a breakthrough to the highest level of Ranky, or even D Lo Y cursed as he bled. He noticed that part of the armor on his chest was glowing. His armor exploded and blood gushed out of his mouth. Bi Jin, leaving, thought that he never shows softness towards his enemies, but this Lo Y turned out to be a little useful, so he will live a little longer. Someone said that nothing less could be expected from a genius with a golden talent, and the Warrior's Guild managed to pick up the treasure. Warrior's Guild. Duinja said that the head was in seclusion, but suddenly called him over. He asked about the genius exchange meeting being over. He said that he wanted to go see if something happened to Bi Jin. The guy with green hair said that Duan Jia has finally come out of the place where the head secluded himself, and everything is going according to the fee. He said that Bi Jin should be killed, and if they took advantage of the situation and got rid of Duan Jia, they could kill two birds with one stone. People in black business suits surrounded Duan Jia. He asked Chen Guang what they needed. Chen Guang asked how long ago Bi Jin, the genius of this guild, awakened. He said that instead of protecting him, he sent the guy to a genius exchange meeting. He asked if he wasn't aware that his opponents had several years of combat experience. He shouted that he had just received news that he had been killed at this meeting. Duan Jia asked in fear that Bi Jin had died. Chen Guang ordered Duan Jia to be arrested with a wave of his hand. He said that he might have ulterior motives to deliberately kill their guild's genius, and they would conduct a thorough investigation and avenge him. The judge announced that the first place at this experience exchange meeting was taken by the participant from the Warrior Guild, Bi Jin. 
the main character showed two fingers with a smile. Someone in the crowd asked about how he was only 18 years old and he was that genius with golden talent. Another person said that he won first place at an experience sharing meeting just a month after awakening. He asked if this was a new record. Bijin thought that he thought he would get more rewards for setting a new record, but the organizer turned out to be quite stingy. He thought that, fortunately, thanks to this meeting, he was able to get food for the baby, although this would only be enough for a while. Zygong said that he was just an amazing guy who made a name for himself at this meeting by defeating everyone, and the Warrior Guild was lucky to get such a treasure. He told Lin Zai that she, as the owner of the Golden Talent, should be happy. Lin Zai said with a smile that she understood. Zygong, rubbing his face, said that with such a demonstration, the Warrior Guild could break the rules and allow Bi Jin to take part in the Dawn Fortress. Lin Zai said that this was impossible, because Bi Jin had just recently awakened, and it was too dangerous for him to participate in such a thing. Zygong said that Jade cannot become an artifact without polishing, and an awakened one without difficult tasks will not be able to grow. He said that if he joined the Archer Guild, he would break all the rules and allow him to participate. Cars drove quickly along the city highway. The main character, sitting in the car, took out a potion from his spatial pocket and drank the potion with a satisfied face. The main character thought that the spatial pocket has some kind of ugly appearance and it needs to be transformed when there is time. He thought that the Warrior Guild still didn't know that he had won first place and Du and Jaw would be surprised when he returned. Maybe he would even get some treasures. The guy driving asked him why he left the martial arts arena so early. He asked if this genius exchange meeting wasn't all that exciting. Bijin said that the meeting is over, so he is returning. The guy said that this cannot be, because in the past it was held until the evening, and sometimes into the night. He asked who took first place this year. The main character, putting his face on his palm, said that he took first place. The guy smiled nervously and congratulated him. He thought that he must have been stimulated by these geniuses. He, since he is returning to the guild, he will have to double his training. He thought that sometimes talent is not something that can be compensated for by skill. The main character got out of the car in front of a large building surrounded by statues. Looking at the people around him, he thought that they were the Dawn City Law Enforcement Team. He wondered what happened at the Warriors Guild. Chen Guang said that Du and Jaw is suspected of killing the genius Bi Jin, and they are protecting him. He asked if they were going to defy the Dawn City's edict. The guy shouted that this was nonsense, because Du and Jaw treats geniuses with kindness, and he couldn't kill him. He said that the people from the law enforcement group were most likely just setting him up, and he shouldn't just listen to Chen Guang's words. The captain of the third squad of the law enforcement department, Wang Kiwong, stood next to the furious Chen Guang with a stony expression. The guy said that Chen Guang is only pretending to be kind, but in fact he is destroying young people to please others. He told them not to think they didn't know. Wang Kiwong said that they received a report that Bi Jin was killed during the genius exchange meeting and they also received evidence implicating Du and Jaw in his murder. He told them if they continued to resist, not to blame him for not showing mercy. His subordinate stepped forward. Du and Jiang gritted his teeth and told them to leave because his conscience was clear and he would only believe in a fair decision after he waited for law enforcement officials. He said that if they resisted, it would only give people with ulterior motives a chance to tarnish the reputation of their warrior guild. Men in suits began to lead him away. Chen Guang said with a grin that he understood everything perfectly, but his crime was not arranged by him. He said there was irrefutable evidence that no one could wash away. Chen Guang grinned evilly, and fiery energy appeared behind him. A fiery fist hit him hard in the face. Chen Guang hit a nearby pillar, rising from the ground and bleeding. He said this was blatant obstruction of law enforcement officers in the performance of their duties. He told Wang Kiwang to arrest them all. Du and Jia and the others opened their mouths in amazement. Wang Kiwang frowned slightly in amazement. The main character told Chen Guang that he had not yet dealt with him for the previous incident, and he had already come here to spread false news. Adjusting his clothes, he asked with a grin why he had to be a dead man. He told him to open his eyes because his uncle Bi Jin was still fine. Du and Jia exclaimed joyfully that he was safe. He asked if he left the genius meeting halfway. Wang Kiwang thought that this guy was Bi Jin. He thought that Chen Guang said that it would work purely, and he could not be relied upon at all. Chen Guang, rising to his feet, asked why he was still alive, since he should have died from Lo Wai. Covering his mouth with his hand, he thought he had let it slip. The guy from the guild said that Chen Guang set it all up. Wang Kiwang thought that Chen Guang was a conspirator, and a thought came to him. 
he told Bijin that manager Duan Jia recommended him to attend the meeting of geniuses, which is a serious violation of the rules among awakened ones, which means he had ulterior motives, and he was also lucky that he realized the danger in time and quickly left the meeting, returning alive. He said that regarding Cheng Guang, their law enforcement department will further investigate and arrest him along with Duan Jia. Bijin asked who told them that he left the meeting. He said that he returned because the meeting was over. Everyone said in surprise that, judging by the time, the meeting should now be in full swing. The guy ran inside and shouted that Bi Jin from their guild had won the Genius Exchange meeting in just half a day, setting the fastest record, and their guild had grown a lot this year, increasing their reputation. Everyone looked at him silently, and the guy awkwardly asked what was going on here. People exclaimed in amazement that he had won first place at the Genius Exchange meeting and set a new record. Bi Jin told Cheng Guang that he and the manager were closely monitoring him, but did not expect that he would not calm down. He said now was the right time to settle the score. Cheng Guang, slamming his back into the wall, said in fear that this was impossible. The protagonist, flexing his fists, said that Duan Jia suspected him even before he handed him the modified unpredictable fist blade. Noticing the sudden movement, he froze in place in amazement. Wang Qiwang stood behind Cheng Guang and said that he was right, and today was the right time to deal with him. The main character frowned, sweating nervously. Bi Jin thought that he didn't expect that law enforcement Captain Cheng Guang would be involved with the Song Company, and from the looks of it, there was someone much more powerful behind them than he thought. The doctors carried people on stretchers, and he wondered what secrets his parents kept, and whether all this was worth such plans. Duan Jia told him not to worry because the director would thoroughly investigate everything when he came out of seclusion. He put his hand on his shoulder. His eyes bulging, he looked sharply at him, laughing. Duan Jia said that he had underestimated him all this time. He said that he had set a record at the Genius Exchange meeting in just half a day, and he had managed to raise the reputation of their warrior guild. Suddenly he exclaimed that his wound hurt. The main character told him that he shouldn't have gotten worked up like that. He told him if he was injured, just give him the first place award and go and recover in peace. Duan Jia said that opening and closing your mouth is already a reward, but he also wants resources. He told him not to worry, because the reward would be significant, because it was important that he stick around here. Bi Jin asked about the importance of this. The assistant manager, Zio Nang, came into the room and said that she brought what Duan Jia asked him to prepare. In her hands was a small box. Duan Jia told the protagonist that according to his first place, his strength should not be doubted, but what he wants to tell him is extremely important, and now he will have to change the level of his spiritual power. There was a blue ball in the box, and Duan Jia said that this crystal was capable of measuring the talent and levels of awakened ones. He suggested starting the measurement. The main character extended his hand to the ball. When he touched it, the ball began to glow blue. Duan Jia exclaimed about the dazzling golden light and said that he truly has golden talent. The ball, glowing with golden light, showed the inscription, D-Rank Warrior. Duan Jia said in amazement that so little time has passed, and he is already an awakened D-Rank. Xiao Nang exclaimed that he is a real genius. Duan Jia said that he is not just a D-Rank awakened, but also a golden talent, which is amazing. Bi Jin asked what important things he wanted to talk to him about. Duan Jia asked if he knew about the Dawn Fortress trial. He said that at first he was hesitant to tell him about it, but now he has already reached D-Rank and has golden talent, so he is quite capable of holding his own in the trial. The main character thought that it was about testing the Fortress of Dawn. He thought that the most important dream of the previous owner of the body was to awaken the class, distinguish himself in the test of the Dawn Fortress, and become the most influential figure in the city. The Dawn Fortress is a temporary gathering place created in the wasteland by the ancestors of humanity who went through many murders before founding the city of Dawn. After the city was founded, the fortress was abandoned and occupied by monsters and other evil entities. To honor the memory of its ancestors and inspire future generations, the city of Dawn holds a test every three years, open to all awakened under 30 years of age. It is also a solemn event for the entire population in the city. Duan Jia said that there was actually a reservoir of cold spiritual energy deep underground in the fortress, and it was this that was the reason for the construction of the fortress at that time. He said that if he could place in the top 10 in the test, he would be given the opportunity to practice it, which would help his spiritual power grow and break through to the next level. He told him that all awakened people under the age of 30 can take part in the test, but among the participants there will be many awakened rank C which means it will be extremely dangerous. He said that if you don't have enough strength, you can die. 
putting his hand on his shoulder. Duinja said that the Dawn Fortress test will be held in a week, and it would be better if he could break into the top 10. But he didn't force it on him, because he was still young and life should be the most important. The main character told him that he didn't have to worry because he could handle it. Rubbing his chin, he thought that since the reason for the Dawn Fortress trial was this pond, he couldn't fail. And if he made it to the top 10, he would have the opportunity to enter the spiritual energy reservoir, which meant that if he tried hard enough, he could break through to rank C. He thought that once this happened, no one in Dawn City would be able to stand in his way. Bi Jin mentally told the manipulators hiding behind the scenes to just wait. Duan Jia said that he was glad that he understood everything. He said that this was his agreed-upon reward, 1 million money and 10 boxes of spiritual power potions. Holding the key in his hand, he said with a smile that in addition, given his record and the fame of their guild, he is also rewarded with the right to use the Awakened Apartment, and this apartment is suitable for a C-rank Awakened, so they will become neighbors in the future. Bijin said that it won't be long before he can return the B family's villa so he won't have to rush around. Duan Jia, frowning seriously, said that he was decisive, because Song abused his official position to get his house, and he knows about it. He said that he did not have enough power to deal with him, but he did not have to worry about anything, because as soon as the director came out of reclusion, he would tell him everything about his merits, and he would help with this matter. The main character smiled, thanked him and thought that he was very kind, but he heard that the director of the warrior guild went into seclusion in order to break through to the level of the god of war in one fell swoop. He thought it was hard to even imagine how long it would take, and he couldn't wait that long. Closing his eye, Bi Jin thought that, besides this, he should deal with his problems himself. The tower shone brightly above the night buildings. The main character was sitting on the bed, surrounded by a whirlwind of blue energy. He said that after reaching D rank, the difficulty of cultivation had only increased. Frowning, he said that he had spent hundreds of thousands of star stones in three days, but the further increase in spiritual power was limited. He had 756 spiritual power points. Bijin said that after spiritual power transformed upon reaching D rank, the requirements for its greater compression became even higher. The Ent, having drunk the potion, raised a glowing finger. The main character asked how he was doing now. Smirking, he said that he had done something to low Y that day, and the fish had already taken the hook. After petting the Ent, he praised him for his excellent work and said that he did not expect that the tree spirit could have such a wonderful ability. Bi Jin changed into black clothes with a brown vest. Smiling, he said that the thief's abilities and all this equipment could be useful. He jumped out of the window onto the neighboring roofs of buildings. Lo Wai was lying on a bed in a hospital room. He was sleeping, and there was a faint green dot on his forehead. Several people entered the room. Dan Hen, deputy head of the law enforcement department, said that according to the information received, the injury Lo Wai suffered was caused by a huge force, similar to the Golden Talent Explosive Force. He said, who would have thought that the son of the Bee family would be a real disaster? Song, adjusting his glasses, said that right now he was just a clueless caterpillar, and if they crushed him as soon as possible, disaster could be avoided. He said that he would definitely take part in the Dawn Fortress trial in four days, and this was definitely the best time to kill him. Dan Hen, grinning, agreed with him, looked to the side and said that he would leave his elimination to him. He asked someone if he could handle it. The hooded guy said that even if Bi Jin has a golden talent, he is only an E-rank awakened, and for him, killing a guy like that is like crushing an ant. As he left the ward, Dan Hen said that Lo Wai had become disabled and knew too many of their secrets, so they needed to get rid of him. He suggested that everything be done cleanly, attributing the cause of death to Bi Jin. The guy in the hood obeyed. The door to the room closed. Something quickly hit Lo Wai on the temple. He shot his eyes open and the veins in his face bulged. Convulsing, he weakly called for help. Noticing the silhouette in the window, Lo Wai extended a shaking hand towards it. The main character asked him with a smile if he wanted to live. Lo Wai wondered if he was dying. He thought how he could die like that, because he is a brilliant knight. Opening his mouth and looking to the side, he thought that he would not accept this. The main character, standing next to him, asked if he wanted to live. Lo Wai thought in amazement that it was Bi Jin. Frowning, he wondered if he was hallucinating as he neared death. Bi Jin told him to say everything he knows, trying to choose his words, and if he does everything right, he will allow a dog like him to survive. Lo Wai thought that this was definitely a hallucination because they were enemies, and he had no need to save him. He thought that, in addition, he was poisoned by a rare C-rank withering poison, and a warrior like him could not cope with that. The main character said with a smile that it was just C-rank poison, nothing worthwhile. 
Taking the handkerchief in his hand, he turned to the ant who was drinking the potion in his hood. He wiped his mouth with a handkerchief. Li Jin threw a handkerchief with green liquid on Lo Wai's head. He thought that the spirits of the tree were born with restorative vitality, and a small amount of their saliva was enough to weaken the effect of the withering poison. Lo Wai asked if he could get rid of the withering poison. He said he didn't believe it. Raising a trembling hand, he asked if he could definitely get rid of the poison. The main character thought that the saliva worked very quickly. He thought that the ant had drunk a large supply of potions of magical power, and it had finally come in handy. Lo Wai asked him where he learned the method of getting rid of the withering poison. Li Jin, frowning, told him not to say anything stupid, because he could only rid his body of the effects of the poison. He told him, if he wants to live, to tell everything he knows. Lo Wai thought that the aura emanating from him was more frightening than Dan Hen, and it was superior to him. He said that he would tell everything he knew. He asked to save his life. The main character listened to Lo Wai's story. Rubbing his chin, he said with a grin that the twists and turns of this case turned out to be much more interesting than he expected. Lo Wai prayed and asked to save his life. Bi Jin, placing two fingers on it, told him not to worry because he would be useful in the future and he would keep his promise. He said with a grin that, however, he would have to die for a while. Lo Wai thought in horror that he was a demon. He wondered why he provoked such a person. A nurse was carrying a man's corpse on a stretcher along the corridor. The main character thought, hiding behind a wall on the street, he thought that he had not even imagined that behind the events taking place in the City of Dawn, there was an entire organization, the Dark Star. He thought that one of the currently famous bosses was a deputy head of law enforcement with a peak B rank, and it was unknown whether there were any bosses with a higher rank. He said that the Dark Star organization has put a lot of effort into eliminating the parents of the body's previous owner, and it seems like it's all for a reason. But unfortunately, Lo Wai has a low position, so he doesn't know the reason. Squinting his eyes, Bi Jin said that he is gradually starting to get closer to the truth, and when the truth comes out, the day of revenge will come. Rubbing his chin, he said that the Dawn Fortress test would take place in four days, and he should take this opportunity to quickly break through to C-Rank. He said that he had just recently broken through to D-rank, his spiritual power was in disarray, and it looked like he would have to use a more drastic method. On the outskirts of the northern part of the city, Dawn Fortress area, the man told Ling Yu that he was a genius raised by their thieves' guild, and he should take first place in the Dawn Fortress trial. Ling Yu smiled confidently and said that he was fully confident of winning the test. He told him not to forget that he was keeping secret the promotion to a C-rank thief, and the compression of the Foundation's spiritual power to 49 spiritual patterns. A purple magic circle appeared in his hand and he asked how he could lose while possessing a silver talent in building a 7th level spiritual foundation. Lee laughed and said that he was right, and the 7th level foundation is first class, but even if he is the weakest among the first class, it is enough to enhance the aura in his body to such an extent that ordinary awakened ones will have a hard time competing with him. He said that the man with the foundation in the City of Dawn last appeared 20 years ago, and he is now the head of the Warrior Guild. Ling Yu, still running, said that they would see, and if he failed to break through to B-rank, he would force him to pick up teeth from the floor. Noticing something, he suddenly frowned. An explosion of blue energy flashed brightly in the forest in front of them. Lee said that it looks like someone is fighting monsters in the forest. He told him to be vigilant because this was a battle with at least C-rank monsters. He said that they would go and see if that person needed help. Standing in front of the corpses of monsters with flaming tails, they said that this was just the most distant part of dawn. Lee asked what a pack of D-rank red fire wolves were doing here. He said that their leader was at least C-rank, and besides, these wolves were killed with filigree precision, with one blow. Ling Yu told him to look at the silhouette. He asked if it was that man. Li said that based on his silhouette, he looks like a young guy. He asked if he too had come here to prepare for the test of the Dawn Fortress. He said it was another unknown dark horse. Ling Yu asked if this was normal. He said that even if he and Na Kiyudin attacked the Red Fire Wolves, they would not be able to defeat them so easily. He asked how among the young awakened ones under the age of 30, someone stronger than them could appear in the City of Dawn. Li told him that caution was the key to whether the awakened could live longer than expected, and if he obsessed over this, then he was not far from death. He asked how many so-called geniuses had died over the years due to their own haste. Ling Yu bowed and said that he would remember his teaching. Li said he's glad he understands. He said that the City of Dawn is full of hidden outstanding geniuses, and who knows what power belongs to the hidden genius they met earlier. He told him if he encountered him in the test to be careful. 
the main character approached a tall structure surrounded by torches. He thought that the corpses of the red fire wolves were of great value, especially their leader, and he was annoyed that he was spotted halfway and had to abandon them. Removing his hood, he asked if this was the Dawn Fortress. He said that the ancestors of the past had to make their way through this chaotic world to get here and build the fortress. Duan Jia asked if he was okay with a smile. He said that he could join the guild's party, and if he didn't want to, he could go alone. Smiling good-naturedly, he said he was worried he would miss the start of the test. Li Jin told him not to worry because he would be fine. He said that he was late because he was delayed on the way by several D-rank monsters. Duan Jia rubbed his chin and said that with his current strength, D-rank monsters are no match for him. He said that he has changed, and he has not seen him for several days, but he feels like the aura emanating from his body has become stronger, and there is even a certain sense of threat. The main character, scratching the back of his head, laughed and said that his premonition was wrong, because he had just broken through to D-rank, and he could not become even stronger so quickly. He thought that the spiritual power in his body had not changed, but everything else had changed, and for the past few days he had been fighting in the forest almost all the time. He thought that the floating spiritual power in his body had condensed again, so it must have changed. Bijin said that since he was going to take part in the test, he should have prepared properly. He asked if he would really be okay. Duan Jia said with a smile that he would be fine, and he was a tough nut to crack, such scratches were nothing to him. Twitching in pain, he said that he was not in pain, and his wound was just itching. The main character sighed and thought that Duan Jia was very stubborn. They went inside the fortress. Inside the fortress there was a huge magic circle that glowed with a bright yellow light. The main character said that the awakened are here at every turn. He asked if not only those awakened under 30 years of age could participate, and if everyone here was going to participate in the test. Duan Jia said of course not. With his hands on his hips, he said that the Dawn Fortress test, held once every three years, is an important event for young awakened ones, like everyone pays attention. And ordinary people watch the test processes live, and the awakened ones who are often on hearing. They come to the place of providence, even if they cannot participate. Frowning his eyebrows, he said that he wanted to warn him. Duan Jia told him to be attentive and careful during the test because the test itself is actually an anomalous space formed in the depths of the fortress, many of which appear to be monsters of sea rank and above. He told him, if he thought he was in danger, not to be a hero in vain. The main character said that he knows about this because he constantly talks about it, and he is so old and still has not found a wife, most likely precisely because he talks a lot. Duan Jia said irritably that the senior members of the guild were taking care of him, but he could not distinguish between good and evil. The main character thanked him. Some talented warrior from the Warriors Guild gave a thumbs up and said that he was absolutely right, and Duan Jia always talks a lot that is not relevant, but he expressed what was in their hearts. Placing a hand on his shoulder, he told Duan Jia not to worry so much, and he ensured that Bi Jin would not face any danger during the trial. The main character thought that they cared a lot about the newcomers to the guild. They found themselves in a huge bright room with stained glass windows. Someone asked if this was Duan Jia. In front of them were two magicians with blue and red hair. Duan Jia exclaimed in amazement, Kang Zai. The main character thought it was the pressure of a B-rank magician. The guy said that this is manager Kang Zai from the Mages Guild, who is a B-rank mage. He said that she was most likely the leader of the Mages Guild in the trial. He said that she has been competing with Duan Jia since the very act, and now she is completely overwhelming him in terms of strength. So he cannot look her in the eye and whenever they meet, he tends to retreat and literally loses ground under his feet. Tiang Zai said that they have not seen each other for a long time, and his strength is still at the C rank level, and he has not even advanced. She asked if this was the same genius who had recently awakened talent. She said that he awakened just a couple of months ago, and he is already sending him to participate in the test. Kiang Zai asked if he was afraid that he might die, or if this meant that the warrior guild had no successor. Duan Jia gritted his teeth and said that Bi Jin came here to gain experience. Pointing his hand at the others, he said that the rest, with the exception of him, are the talented elite of the warrior's guild, the real head of the strength of the guild, and they will still crush the mage's guild, receiving a high place in the ranking. Kiang Zai asked with a smug grin if they would crush their guild with their mediocrity. She asked if he had the courage to argue. Duan Jia clenched his fist and said, A dispute is a dispute, and he is not afraid. Kiang Zai said that a bet must be made in a dispute. She told him, since he is a poor C-rank warrior, to bet on a B-rank spiritual power solution. People looked at them with narrowed eyes, and Kiang Zai asked him if he was scared. 
Duanja said that he was not afraid. After all, it was just a solution of B-rank spiritual power. He agreed. Kang Zai said that they will see who will be the loser of the bet at the end of the challenge. The guy put his hand on his face and said that Duan Jia had completely lost his mind. Another guy said that he was completely bold, since he was arguing with the main favorite. Duan Jia asked, looking after her, how could he agree to a bet with this woman? He said that this solution was his treasure. He told everyone to try to break the mage's guild. The man announced the beginning of the test of the Fortress of Dawn. A huge blue portal appeared in the room. People began to enter the portal one by one. The main character came out of a portal in a destroyed abandoned fortress. Looking around, he said that this was the anomalous space of the Dawn Fortress. People began to disperse in different passages. The guy told the main character that they would go deep into the fortress. He told him to stay in the outer area and never go inside. And if he ran into trouble, to use his warrior token to call for help and they would come quickly. Bi Jin said, he understood. He told them to go and try. Smirking and narrowing his eyes, he thought that he could finally go it alone. The room was now empty. The main character walked in a dark corridor with long steps. An E-rank monster, a surf hound, charged at him. He quickly extended his hand to the monster's face. Bi Jin calmly walked past the monster, who was lying dead on the floor with his head torn off. He thought that in the Dawn Fortress challenge, you can earn points by hunting monsters. F-rank gives no points. E-rank gives 1 point, D-rank 10 points and C rank 100 points. Frowning, the main character thought that he only received one point for this monster, and killing them was a waste of time. He thought that he needed to hurry up and find higher ranking monsters. Bi Jin found himself surrounded by surf hounds on all sides. He exclaimed that there were a lot of them, and if an ordinary awakened D rank were to encounter such a situation, he would obviously have problems. Waving his flaming fist, he said that he was in a hurry. The monsters rushed to attack him at once. Li Jin began to throw very fast punches. The floor of the corridor was strewn with the corpses of monsters. Blue energy enveloped the main character, and he said that the surf hounds are overflowing with life force, and it may have some value. The energy was gathering in his hand, and he said that their number was constantly growing, and they could be a good material for building the foundation of spiritual power. He said it shouldn't be wasted. Bi Jin said that the spatial pocket looks unsightly, and its shape should be changed when it becomes a C-rank awakened, and said he liked it that way. The main character said that the Ents' aesthetics were too outdated, and he would train them later. He entered a large stone passage with steps. The guy in the hood said that the person in front looks like Bi Jin. He said it was usually impossible to find and not worth wasting time on. Being a C-rank thief, he ran after him and thought that he would take his life. He mentally told him not to blame him when he ended up in hell, because he himself had insulted the master. Stopping. The guy thought that attacking openly was a bad idea, and Mr. Dan Hen gave him instructions to avoid the attention of the warrior guild. Death should look natural, and preferably, he would die from the clutches of monsters. Smirking. He said that if he remembered correctly, there should be a horde of monsters on the path above, and it looked like he would have to use a bottle of rank B blue abyss drug to attract them here. The guy thought that as soon as he uncorked the Blue Abyss drug, its aroma began to spread over a large area. The aroma of the drug began to descend down the steps, and he mentally told the main character to consider it an honor to die from such an expensive drug. But, unfortunately, the dead people he would have to fight with were already dead. The main character walked along a dark corridor. Something flashed in front of him and he stopped abruptly. D-rank monsters, armored zombies armed with swords, rushed to attack. Bi Jin quickly destroyed them with his flaming fists. Looking at the corpses of the monsters, he said that armored zombies lack intelligence and are even weaker than some D-rank awakened ones. Heavy footsteps were heard. The main character said that he got 10 points for each monster, and in total he got 400 points and wasted his time. In front of him were many monsters with swords. After destroying the monsters, he said that their armor could serve as good materials, and it was a waste. Bi Jin found himself facing a dead end and said that it looked like he would have to turn back and take a different route. Frowning, he changed his mind. Touching the ground with his hand, he said that it seemed that these footprints were left by the awakened ones who passed the test last time, and it looked strange. Looking at the wall, the main character said that the footprints are incomplete, and the heel is near the wall. In other words, you can walk through these walls, because someone has already done it. Rubbing his chin, he assumed they were traps. He said with interest that it seemed like this place had its own secrets. Li Jin activated the summoner's characteristic, Chaos Sense. He said that the secret mechanism was hidden in the torches on the wall. He said that you need to light the first, third and fifth torches in turn. 
the main character lit the necessary torches with fiery energy. He said that the torches should then be turned in a certain sequence, second, fourth, and sixth. The wall moved back noisily. Then it split in two and moved apart, opening a passage. The main character walked through the open passage. In front of him were three knights in golden armor, armed with spears. Finding him approaching, they moved. Bijin said that these were three C-rank monsters, surf knights, and if there were anyone else at this test, he would have already despaired. Taking a fighting stance, he said that for him this was just a warm-up. He told the monsters to demonstrate their mysterious secrets. Beckoning them with his finger, he said that he hoped they would not disappoint him. The monsters began to approach him, rattling their armor. The aroma of the drug spread through the ruins following the main character. It came through the door he passed through. Swinging their spears, the knights rushed to the attack. Swinging his dagger, Bijin blocked their attacks. He swung his flaming fist. The impact of his fist sent the knight flying backwards, slamming him into the wall. The other two knights attacked him with their spears. Two spears pierced the main character's body. Bijin activated the thief skill, instant step, and the spears only pierced his copy. He thought that before coming to the test, he asked Ju Yin to help him acquire the skills of various awakened ones on the black market. And right now, instant step is the best skill he can buy. And although the price for it is high, still, the effect is quite useful. The knights froze in amazement. The main character rushed to attack, raising his fist. Hitting the knight, he threw him back, hitting him against the wall. He frowned as he noticed something. The knight was shrouded in a yellow aura, and Bi Jin wondered how the surf knights began to resurrect. Another knight hit him with a spear. He immediately disappeared before his eyes. The main character appeared behind the knight. Hitting him with his fist, he punched a hole in his body. The knights, shrouded in a yellow aura, lay on the ground. Bi Jin saw one of the knights rise to his feet again. He said that he was careless because surf knights do not really die and he cannot even restore his health. He said that continuously fighting with three knights at the same time was too exhausting for him. A large blue magic circle appeared in the room. A greenish figurine appeared above the magic circle. The main character, squinting, said that, of course, it was the puppet's magical formation. And now it's clear why this secret room is a closed space. He said that past test subjects fell into a trap and were turned into surf knights. By absorbing spiritual energy, the puppet magic formation is able to quickly resurrect puppets and control them, and is a perfect example of a defensive magic formation. Bijin said that it seems that this secret room was once the hiding place of the Dawn Fortress, and puppets are required to guard it. But this place has long been devastated and the last remaining treasures have most likely already been taken by long-time test subjects. The figurine, shrouded in dark energy, told him to leave here. The main character exclaimed that a soul was born in the statue, and it became the spirit of a magical formation. He said that these people did not understand this at all, and in addition to the treasures in this secret room, this figurine itself is also a treasure. He said that the magical formation had been functioning for thousands of years, fueled by spiritual energy from the underground cold spring. It was no wonder that a spirit had arisen within it. Looking at the knights rising to their feet, Bi Jin thought that in his previous life he had managed to build the foundation of the highest eighth level, and this was realized through various opportunities. Before laying the foundation of spiritual power, his goal was to first enter the cold source of spiritual energy in order to use its huge volume to create it and now he would not have to worry about reaching the level of his previous life. Rushing forward, the protagonist thought that, having such an opportunity, he could build a stronger foundation than before. Having hit the magic barrier, he said that the light curtain had quite strong protection, and ordinary attacks of an awakened C rank could not break through it. The figurine, shrouded in energy, told him to die. The main character found himself surrounded by various monsters. Smirking, he said that it seemed that the spirit of the magic formation was also fighting to the fullest, summoning such a crowd of puppets. He said it was getting dangerous and he would have to take his chances. Li Jin activated the thief's instant step skill and the mage's dispel magic skill. His purple energy hit the light curtain. The main character grabbed the figurine in his hand. He raised the figurine above his head and the monsters rushed to attack him. Looking at the tips of the blades, he said that he had calculated everything correctly. Sitting on the magic circle, Bi Jin said that now the magic formation of the puppet is completely under his control, and now he can finally begin to implement his plan using the spirit and blood of the surf hounds collected earlier. A sphere of blue energy appeared above his hand. He activated the puppet's magic formation reversal. The puppet's magical formation has become one with the magician's statue, and to best improve it, it is necessary to reverse it, and this will be the best help for merging the statue. 
The figurine hovered in the air in front of the main character's chest. The magician statue has a thousand-year-old spirit, and through the secret spirit fusion technique, it can be integrated into the body to lay the highest foundation of spiritual power. Just as the awakened differ in status and power, so it is here. E and D ranks are for low-level awakened ones, and upon reaching C rank, awakened ones rise to a higher level. To become a leader in the City of Dawn, you must be at least a C rank awakened. It is extremely difficult for awakened ones to break through from D rank to C rank, because to do this they must lay a strong foundation of spiritual strength in their bodies. The difference between the advantages and disadvantages of the spiritual strength foundations is also strikingly different. Lowest rank, 1 spirit pattern, 4 spirit patterns, 9 spirit patterns. Average rank, 16, 25, and 36. Highest rank, 49, 64, and 81. Yellow energy filled the room. Cursing. Bi Jin said that the magician statue had been tested for thousands of years, and the power contained in it was too great and powerful. He said that given the strength of his body, he would not be able to withstand it in the short term, and might even explode. The spears rushed towards his neck. Having dodged, the main character thought that the statue of the magician had completely merged with his body, and this was tantamount to dissipating control over the surf knights. He thought that although they would not be resurrected again, they themselves could control their bodies, and the fact that they decided to attack him together was not surprising. The main character told them to attack, and they would just help him harden his body, which was on the verge of destruction. He kicked one of the knights into the wall. There was a huge explosion and the animals let out a menacing roar. Bijin said with a grin that there were more than 10 different kinds of C-rank monsters gathered here, as well as dozens of D-rank, surf knights, blood-winged bats and beasts. He said there was finally some pressure. A strong yellow energy enveloped him and he said it was an explosion of full force. 